Okay, okay, Wait, we are live. Right? Yeah, we can hear you, man. Yeah, I can hear you. And everyone else hey! across the world can hear you. So that means that it's time, ladies and gentlemen, mostly dudes, most likely, we're all very friendly aware that uh, this is probably who's listening to us. But anyways, welcome to the greatest D&D extravaganza of all time. Welcome to another Goblins. Under the stairs! Guts! Now, it's to bring us back into another awesome edition of our slashing and bashing. You got Soul Rack the Destroyer here, along with the smallest loot player he knows, Wilmore Chattington, and the Birdman himself, Kaka Lukaj. And now, we were left in a very precarious position to not to get to it. The gingerest DM in all the land, ladies and gentlemen, get up for Nate Gonzalez! Woo! Woo! Yeah! Kill me! Woo! <laughs> crowd goes wild. Yes, thank you everyone. The world's most gingerous. The crowd goes mild. <laughs> 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 welcome, welcome to another week of Goblins Under the Stairs. Tonight is actually uh, night 20 of our campaign. So uh, we've made it five months officially now into this. Uh, yeah, pretty exciting stuff happening currently. I feel like we're still at the very beginning. Just just still climbing that mountain of this campaign. And uh, I'm excited to see where the next 20 nights take us. So without further ado, let's uh, do a quick little recap of last week. Don't even remember where we started. <sighs> oh yeah, so we started. Uh, you guys were like in that alleyway with the uh, Zentarum guys and the that arch mage, the bald guy with the cloak, uh, Narvi. You guys learned his name to be They're that red wizard folk. He uh, they started walking away down the alleyway in the darkness of the night after Wilmore gave him the uh, the old Lux and Beacon that he found at Helia Thornton's Miners Exchange up in good old Fandolin. Uh, you guys. Not quite sure what to make of the situation. Decided to uh, head back to the Yawning Portal, grab a couple drinks. Uh, Solrak, uh, maybe one, just one drink is all he needed, but he got himself the old Solrak, as they now call it, the Yawning Portal. The uh, biggest and strongest drink that uh, they could fix him up there. And uh, yeah, he got himself nice and drunk, but not before talking to the Lord's Alliance members there. A good old Meyer and Oscar. And learned about some... Um, Sketch going on down at the dock ward with the Zentarum, and uh, they asked for a little bit of your guys' help. You know, a little bit of you scratch my back, we'll scratch yours. And uh, so you guys made your way down to the dock ward and started investigating a little bit to see what's what's happening down there. Lots of ruckus, lots of lots of chaos. We almost spotted a a couple of cloaked figures uh, looking a little shady, a little suspicious, loading up a dinghy. Uh, Notice that. They were actually Kenku, uh, kind of concealing their identities, and uh, st looked like they were stealing some some common trade goods, some some uh, food, some fruits and vegetables, some bottles of alcohol as well. And uh, so, you know, Wilmore, being a little master disguise, a little trickster, he decided to disguise himself as one of the Kenku and approach them and uh, start playing along with them, uh, playing the act, but. Not too long after that, they also noticed that on a ship right nearby, a bit of a larger vessel, uh, was Narvi, the Red Wizard, with uh, his Zentarum thugs, and um, another cloaked man uh, handing over that uh, that Luxon beacon, or just whatever it was wrapped up in that black velvet cloth, which you guys saw him put that Luxon beacon in when you handed it to him. Uh, they disclosed it in a uh, kind of hidden location on the ship, and Solrak and Luke Gonch was like, you know, we need to do something about this. They're right here. Can't let them, you know, get away. So Solrak started sneaking up around the corner. Luke Gonch posting up on the other side. Uh, Solrak tried to distract them by throwing like a peach over there. Uh, kind of worked a little bit until he called over and one of the guys saw him and did, the, did his old toll of the dead, which actually worked. He rang his little uh, spectral bell in the air and hurt this guy just a little bit, but enough to get his attention and call out to Narvi that you all were there and that they had company uh, approaching them. So let me go ahead and switch this map over to that uh, that encounter that you guys are working up to right now. So, um, 
pretty and much. For the record, uh, yeah. everybody, it wasn't a little bell. It was an awesome, glorious bell. Yeah. A majestic yeah. bell that everybody could see. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was, uh. It, it, it was <laughs> worth two damage. It was like one of the bells. It was like one of the bells at a, a hotel counter that you like ring, and it's just annoying. It was annoying enough to do damage. <laughs> but if you ring it enough, you can get yourself cut, right? And the metal can give you tetanus, which would be very deadly, hair yeah. and badass. Very deadly. So uh, we see Solrak uh, down here, around in the corner. I uh, just cast that toll of the dead on this. Um, this Zentarum thug in front of him, the thug, after grabbing his head, uh, shaking off this ringing, looks up at the boat and yells, Boss! We got company! I need you all to roll initiative. Oh, shit! Huh? Lucky number 13, half. 21. 21, very nice. 20. Alright, alright. Uh, okay, so uh, up first we have this uh, this man that's this cloaked man. He, he, you see him uh, brandishing two uh, short swords in his hands, uh, kind of like swinging them around in a kind of fanciful way, showing his uh, skill with them. And he looks down at Solrak and then looks back up at Wilmore on the boat. It's like, we're surrounded. You two, go up there. And he points up to Wilmore. And, uh, and he's like, you two, stay down there. And then points down over to uh, Solrak. And uh, he's going to run up to Wilmore as far as he can. Let's see. He can go that full distance. And he's going to uh, slash at him with his short swords. Wow, that was the slowest roll in the world. <laughs> I might have to do this by hand if it does that again. These, these are with advantage, by the way. That's part of his thing. So, uh, first one slashes into him. You guys see that it connects Wilmore deep. Like, uh, well, how much? How, how, how much does it hit? Twenty-six. Okay, it hits. Yeah, Sl <laughs> slashes into him big, uh, leaving a, like a massive wound in him. Uh, for a total of, wow, this is, I'm going to point out my dice, I'm sorry. F first hit was for nine slashing damage, and, uh, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Four. Four. And you take 20 points of poison damage. <laughs> he's gonna go ahead. And, much dead. He's gonna go ahead and take his short sword out again. Has his other short sword in his hand. And he's gonna raise it overhead and he's gonna slash down at you with that one. Uh, he rolls in 18 plus six, so 24. Hits again. Okay. Um, does nine points of piercing damage and another Constitution saving throw. Bro. Uh, 15. 15, okay. Um, so you take 10 points of poison damage. And it, it, I'm dead. It was 20 and then halved. So because you succeeded on that save as you felt that poison entering your skin from the tip of his dagger tip of his short sword it starts going into your blood uh, stream and you feel it's pushing in but you have this one bit of less energy in you to just force it out of your bloodstream but you said you're unconscious now yep okay and Wilmore is down well, that was fun <laughs> that was a blast <laughs> You guys made a mistake dumping them. Um, all right, Wilmore, death saving throw. Uh, isn't there an easy way to do it in here? Or I just roll a twenty. 
Um, what is it? It's just a, it's just a twenty, right? No, or is it a yeah, con save? No, it's a twenty, but um, there, there is a button somewhere. I'm trying, I'm like, do I just? Is it your? Let's see. I thought there was a button. Hmm. Oh well, I'll just do this. Go to everyone. That's a success. That is a success. Wilmore uh, holding on to his dear life. Do you, you see your uh, moments of life flash before you? Anything that you see specifically? Specifically, I, I see, I see myself being tortured in in a in a holding cell on an island with with mass wizards pulling out my fingernails feeding them to me oh gnarly you actually get you actually get inspiration for that <laughs> okay um that... and, and this stream brought to you by grubhub <laughs> a delicious fingernail sandwich today yeah. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Uh, this uh, Zentarum thug is up now on the uh, this edge of the ship. Uh, sees. Uh, let's see. How far can he go? All right. He's gonna run just up to here. It's as far as he can get. And it's Lucan's turn. On the uh, docks of the of the pier, you you uh, see this uh, cloaked man strike down two massive uh, overhand slashes with his dual short swords into Wilmore. And you just see Wilmore fall to his knees and then collapse. Well, I can't, I can't leave my little half friend behind. Oh, no, I gotta put and, on metal uh, music, I just realized. Go on. So, I fly up there with my rapier glowing and stare this man directly in the eyes and give him a couple, like, hard exhales with a little, like, Thick breath that you can see almost as an intimidation factor with that septum and come down with the uh the, the light bringer all right go for it yeah, 11 um 11 on him just hits Alright, so, and that's it's close. Hold on one sec. What's it? Yep, so eleven. Okay, eleven points of damage slashing or piercing into him. Yep, and then I'm gonna do it again. Go for it. Oh, twenty three. Twenty three is definitely hit. And I'm gonna I'm gonna smite divine smite that. Alright, go for it, man. Alright, so let's see. So 48. Sounds right to me. I can't figure out why this won't play though. I'm about to kick rhythm out of the thing. Uh, 24. 24 Ooh. points of damage. Nice. Yep. Out your battle music. Why won't you anyway turn that down? <laughs> <laughs> I need that. <laughs> oh shit! I, I kicked. I kicked what rhythm. It's badass. <laughs> Apparently, I just kicked rhythm from the whole group. Oh, uh, he's been replaced. That's <laughs> not what I meant. He's been replaced by funk. <laughs> oh, let me see if I have music built into here. Uh, oh. Oh, that's like that. Yeah. There we go. That's a, that's a pretty badass, yeah? I could kill to this. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Okay, let me make sure that's on loop. Is that too loud? A little bit. Whoa. Yeah, but can't we turn it down? No, it's it's on that. It's on above. Ah, okay. It's like super hard to get it just low enough. Just low enough. Just a faint whisper. 
Hopefully on the stream it's not like <laughs> That's better, right? That's good. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. Alright, so it was how much damage right there, Luke? I'm sorry. Twenty-four. Twenty-four, and okay. So thirty-five total so far. Very nice. Uh, he's feeling that pain after you pull the Lightbringer back out of his body and you're staring at him. Uh, he definitely looks pissed at you now, uh, but Wilmore lying there unconscious to your side. Uh, you have a bonus action now if there's anything that you'd like to do. Yep, yeah, uh, I'm going to uh, cast my spiritual weapon. Alright. Hold on one second. And then attack him with it. Oh, 21. Mm. Uh, that is definitely a hit as well. Give a little Gucci Gucci Goo. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Seven points of damage. Very yes, nice. Sir. Um, So yeah, your spiritual weapon, this uh, tentacle comes floating out of the air and just lays a big old slap on him and it smacks him across the face and like pushes him uh, um, to the side a little bit and he looks back and he sees this tentacle just floating there and it kind of shocks him for a second. Uh, and that, uh, anything else that you want to do? That's it. That is it, he said. Alright, uh, that means Narvi is up now. He sees that, uh, you just floated up, or flew up there, Wilmer's knocked down, Solrak round in the corner, um, definitely feeling a little bit surrounded right now. He's going to point his staff over in the direction of you, Luke Gange, and he's going to cast, uh, well, he's, you just see these, this, like, glowing light, sorry, emitting from the end of his staff, this, this onyx black staff, and, uh, out of it, you just see these four darts, missiles, like, psh, 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 all shoot out in your direction, um, and they all hit you, And you can get seven, hey, mate, 17 hey, points of force damage. Hey, mate. Yep. Um, quick question. So, sure. when uh, Chattington got the coffer, is does are do we all have access to that? It's in his possession. Okay, gotcha. Never mind. Uh, 17 points of force damage to you. 17 points. Okay. And uh, you see him walk up to this area, and he uh, reaches down and uh, kind of does something with his hands to the deck right there. And uh, that is his turn. Let's see. Yep. This guy at the bottom of the deck, uh, he's just going to come running up as far as he can to the center, and that is his turn. Solrak, you're up. Alright, yeah. First things first. It's rage time! <gasps> now, swing at this. I'm gonna come up and run up to this guy right in front of me. Swing talent at him, here. Go for it, man. Damn it, it's 11. 11 hits Eleven. as you slash into him with talent. Love it. Here, I'm wince out in pain. 11 damage here. Plus. Plus 2, 13 here. 13 points of damage. Slashing and doing with Talon. Yeah, he looks hurt from that. Let me see if I have. Nah, no, I'm good. Alright. Um, That's your turn, correct? Yeah, you use your bonus action to yes, rage. Sir. Cool. Alright. Um, it's his, his turn now, standing right in front of you. Uh, not stoked about all that action. He's going to pull out, uh, he's got a mace to his side. He pulls it out and kind of twirls it around in his hand a little bit. And then overhand tries to smack you with it. He rolls a 15 total. Ha, bitch. And then he's going to go ahead and, uh, you know, swing it ag around again. Try to take one more slam at you with it. And he rolls a 13 total on that one. Ha! Bitch! 
and that's his turn as uh, he just looks at you a little bit embarrassed as you just like dodge out of the way of these like two overhand attacks from him. Uh, he's definitely feeling hurt from these uh, slashes into him. And uh, yeah, this uh, one guy on the deck, he sees Luke Gange up here uh, attacking uh, one of his like main guys. He's going to get run up with uh, his mace as well and rolls a 16 to hit is a hit all right um and he does six points of bludgeoning damage as that slap or as it slams down on uh your head and then he goes to do it again and this one you're able to dodge out of the way um okay now this guy down here he actually has a uh, heavy crossbow that he pulls out from his back and he lines up and aims it at Solrak uh, and pulls uh, the trigger and shoots a bow at him. He rolls a 14 to hit. Ha! Ah, bitch! <laughs> he, he cranks it again, uh, loads another arrow in there and rolls a 16 to hit. Ha! Ah, bitch! <laughs> and that's his turn. <laughs> Alright. Uh, we gone. You have this this cloaked man with these two short swords, uh, twirling them around in his hands, uh, standing right in front of you. You just did a bunch of damage to him, and he's uh, not not super stoked about that. So he's going to go and uh, slash at you with one of the swords. Rolls a 16 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Um, he does seven points of piercing damage. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. You did. Yeah, uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, three? Okay. Um, I mean, is your health, oh. is your health seven? Yeah. Uh, you, you, he knocks you out. Alright. Oh, man. Uh, he raises the short sword, slashes down at Luke Ganja, clacks right in his plumage, and he just falls to the ground, holding his chest. As uh, Sorak, you look up and you see this happening. Uh, his white feathers just start turning a, a deep crimson blood red. He's uh, holding in his chest uh, with his blood just pouring out of it, and he falls to his knees and then collapses on the deck right there. Burn! Um, this guy, he does a, a double somersault backflip and gets the Narvi, and, uh, you, you guys are unconscious, so you can't see this or hear this, but he, uh, Solrak, you can see he, he puts his head towards him and says something, and, uh, Narvi, uh, nods, and that's the end of that interaction. Uh, Wilmore, you are up, you are gasping at your, uh, at your breath, uh, holding on for dear life. I uh, just saw these moments flash before your eyes. Uh, make a death saving throw. That's a nat 20. That's a nat 20. Ooh. Hell yeah. I got my one point of life that I'm just about to get taken from me. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, you guys see... Wilmore... Right? Yeah. yeah, Wilmore just... <gasps> takes a deep, big deep breath. His eyes open up. And exhales. And his eyes are wide, uh, looking up to the, the sky and uh, realizing where he is currently as he looks down at the wooden deck all around him. Um, this pool of blood around him, and he looks over and sees Luke Gans also unconscious by his side. Um, and that's your turn. Yep. So this little guy over here um, sees you pop up, and he runs over with his mace. Oh. Hey, where's Brutus, by the way? That. He's here. He's, he's tied up at the docks. Or he's over at the docks right. somewhere. You guys just didn't do anything with him? You guys gotta control your dog. Uh, and he rolls a 7 to hit. That's a no. And a, four and a 14 to hit. That's a no. As you're lying down on the ground, he, he sees an opportunity to just take these uh this mace and slam down at you. You roll to the side one way and roll to the side the other way as he tries to strike down at you again. Uh, and yeah, he just misses you. Luke Gange, you thought, are... What's up? I thought you controlled Brutus, though. I do, but you, I mean, he's 
a dog. He's going to just, like, sit there. You guys got to tell him what to do. Like, you guys got to control him, have him on a leash or something. Uh, he's not just going to, like, you guys put him, you guys were like, okay, I'm going to go up here. Solrak's going to go over here. Wilmore's going to go over here. You guys never said what he was, like, like, what you guys wanted him to do or anything. He's way too far now, anyway. It would take him, like, six turns to get here. Yeah. Luganj, you holding uh just fell down to uh your back, holding on to your chest, uh your eyes are closed and uh blood is pulling out around you. Your beautiful white feathers now completely completely stained red. You see moments of your life flash before your eyes. Is there anything that you see in particular? Nah, just I'm trying to keep my eyes open as best I can you know every every couple moments I'm able to see a little glimpse of light uh, coughing up blood it's getting my eyes are getting really heavy breathing has been really tough Let me make this roll ah, three you feel your eyes your eyelids start getting heavier as that light that you can barely see starts slowly, slowly drifting out of your view, out of your sight, and you feel just a bit of your essence start, start slowly pulling away from you. That is your turn. Uh, Wilmore, you see Narvi uh, acknowledge this uh, cloaked figured man, and he uh, reaches down to the deck below him and pushes some sort of button, uh, some sort of combination of, of hand gestures, and you see this box uh, automatically kind of rise up from the deck. It's uh, a black box. It's uh, ornately carved. has, like, these onyx fixtures on it, and uh, you see Narvi grab it, and then instantly he disappears. Yay! Oh, shit. I just deleted someone, didn't I? I deleted Soul Rack. You deleted? No, I, I deleted. Still there. Uh, from the initiative track, right? Nah, nah. Yeah. So, you, what was your number, Soul Rack? It was like 13? Yeah, he was like right after the guy after him. Yeah. Perfect. Alright. Um, so, Narvi, you guys see. Right after the guy after him, yes. <laughs> I understood what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Wilmore, um, like your your life essence just barely coming back to you. You see Narvi grab this box, this black ornately decorated box, and he just vanishes into thin air with it, um, leaving no trace behind him. Um, you wondering, you know, where could he possibly have gone? This uh, this thug now over here, he uh, runs Actually up. Actually, wondering why the fuck we're on this ship. <laughs> it was your idea. <laughs> he and let him be, and then y'all was all like, "Let's go get it back." So I came to get it back. Over to him, and was going ready to go save your family. That's what I was ready to do. They said, oh, there's a little square somewhere. <laughs> On the bright side, at least you remember being tortured now. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, this uh, Zentarum thug, he pulls out a uh, heavy crossbow, and he cranks back the lever, and he goes to shoot it at Solrak. Uh, he rolls a four, so the, the arrow just, ah! it, it pierces into the wooden uh, beam next to you that's supporting the, the pier. Uh, he cranks it back and shoots another one. He rolls an 18 on this one. Ah, I do have an 18, so... Is it 18 or 19, your armor class? It's 18, that's right. 18. For some reason, I thought it was 19. Awesome. All right. So he hits you. It was with... briefly. That's right. Um, seven points of piercing damage as this arrow flying through the air pierces into your skin, and you uh, yep. you flex it out. Actually, the arrow pops out of your skin, and uh, yeah, half damage on that. So uh, three points of damage. Rage, man. All right, Solrak, you are up. All right, I'm gonna finish disposing with this loser in front of me. Here, huh? first things first, it's talent time. The sixteen here. Huh? Sixteen is a hit. 
slashing into him. That's ten damage, twelve damage, huh? Twelve damage, hell yes. Uh, yeah, he's he's definitely looking pretty hurt now. All right, now it's one slayer, and that's a fourteen hit. Fourteen's a hit. And a nine damage hit. And with the old one slayer, you overhand slash down into him, and this one carves right through his neck through his torso and out the other side and the guy just falls to the ground with the top half of his body sliding off of it. <laughs> now I'm going to move right here. Bam. And I'm going to stand between these two losers like, you're next, bitches! Ha <laughs> ha! Um, give me an intimidation roll. Just for the fuck of it. Fourteen. They both look at each other wide-eyed for a second, and they, they kind of get a little bit closer to each other. Yeah. Um, okay, this one up by Wilmore. Oh, no, wait. Was it the orange one that was? Okay, yeah, I did that wrong then. Okay, he's right here then. He, um, comes running up to Wilmore with his mace in hand. Eat a dick. That's what he would do. He rolls a 12 to hit. <coughs> Suck a dick. Oh. And a 12 to hit. Mm -mm. As you're rolling around on the ground, you're just like back and forth, <laughs> fucking dodging all of these uh, mace hits. <laughs> you guys can just like learn. picture. Yeah, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> so it's literally rolling back and forth on this deck. It's amazing. Um, this guy is up now. He's uh, got his crossbow out, pointing at Solrak. Uh, he's is a little intimidated. He starts backing up onto the ramp of the boat a little bit, cranks back the lever on the crossbow, and uh, rolls a 12 to hit. Ha, bitch! And then he cranks it back again. He rolls a natural 20 on this one. Ooh. Oh, ouch. Um, Only half ouch. Yeah, you're lucky. Um, damn, and it wasn't even good. It was a s 7 total. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you feel this arrow pierce into you, and once again you're just like walking over there like you're Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Terminator, and it's like hitting you, and then you just poof, the arrow pops out of your chest again uh, as it in makes impact, and yeah, three points of damage on that instead of seven. Nice. Um. Okay. Uh. Did the music stop for you guys? Yeah. 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 Sorry, guys. <laughs> I have the loop button pressed. I don't know why it's not, like, looping it. But whatever. It's not the end of the world. All right. The um, hooded figure is up now. Well, it's later. An asteroid figure. <laughs> Actually, my campaign on Wednesday did end with another planet crashing into the, <laughs> into the, the world. Yeah. That's a bit much. Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> what do you roll to stop that? <laughs> oh, God. We had a countdown. We knew it was coming. Um, <laughs> the whole world flooded and everything. There's a, a giant kraken. It was wild. Um, it's funny shit, though. All right, so what's he going to do? All right, he's going to... Let's see. He's right in between the two. He's actually gonna run and uh, up to Wilmore. Fuck! He's got to. Doesn't have to. Take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm tired of being bad and then join us. You know? <laughs> and uh, sees you lying down on the ground. He's gonna take uh, his a swing at you. He rolls a 15 to hit. Nope. And a eight. No, 14 to hit. Nope. All right. <laughs> Both, you are just rolling around all over this deck right now, and it's finally your turn. You're oh, lying there God. down prone. The machines to get up it takes half your movement. And oh, uh, yeah. So hold on. Let me see something here. So how can I get them all? I think I can get them all. So they're all within a 30, 30 foot box, right? From orange guy to the left, and then you take that, and then you go down 30, and you get everybody that is in the pool. 
That is correct. So while I'm um, while I'm like squirming, I'm just gonna pull out my loot, lay on my back, and I'll be like, "Hello, darkness, my old friend." <laughs> <laughs> You again. And then out of the out of the top, this like purple just mist just comes out as I cast hypnotic pattern on every fucking person. Love it, love it, love it. It's a uh, it's a thirty cube or is that what it's, it is? It's a, yeah, yeah, it's a thirty cube. And you place the mark, the center mark of it. Uh, yeah. I okay. So, yeah. so yeah, because of the way that that it works, then then yeah, you will be able to do that and not affect anyone else in your party too. So that yep. that should work. All right. Yeah. So that's a yeah. um wisdom for me, right? Yeah, that's fourteen wisdom for everybody. Okay, we'll start with the um with the uh, hooded guy. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Okay. Um, he rolls a ten. Night, night. The black one next to him rolls a natural 20. The orange one next to him rolls a 4. The purple guy, 17. And blue, oh. blue guy, natural 20. Alright, so it's just the two up by us that are sleeping. Charm. Yeah. So, and yes. We'll Charm. Do, uh, just charmed. Yeah, just do charm. I think that's what they are, technically. Oh, you're doing it? Cool. Yeah, I just threw it on there. Ah. Thank you. Yeah, it's just those two. Okay. And then I'm going to I'm gonna throw a healing word to my buddy. I'm just going to, like, tap him on his little bird foot and be like, you good? So that is... Does he just pop back up, or do I have to... Or, or does he actually get the health I roll? Um, we'll, we'll let you get the health that you roll. Alright. So, Bird, you now have four health. Oh, oh wait, hold on, oh, hold on, right. I'm sorry. You, um, used Mind Sliver, or I'm sorry, not Mind Sliver, uh, Hypnotic Pattern, which is, it, the second spell that you could be able to use would have to be a cantrip. I know it's a bonus action, but it's a, you can use a bonus, trip, or a bonus action and a cantrip. Or a cantrip and a regular spell. You can't use. Two, oh, I can't two, use an action and a bonus. You can't use two regular spells in a turn unless one of them is a cantrip. Well, that's neat. All right, then. Um, I guess so I'll, I mean, you I guess... could, you can still do like Eldritch Blast right now or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, we'll um, I guess we'll Eldritch Blast the. The, the black one. One right in front of you. Perfect. Oh, hold on. So I can. I've used my action. Can I? Can I force feed him a potion or no? Since he's, hmm. Let's use a, a healer's kit to. I don't have a healer's kit. Okay. Uh, it's like it's hard to when someone's unconscious force them to drink something. That's fair. Um, I can't m massage the jugular. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to make a dex check for that one. No, no um, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. All right, Luke, don't don't die, buddy. But you can uh, do that. Uh, yeah, we'll do uh, Eldritch Blast to the one that's alive. Perfect. Go ahead and roll that. Fourteen. That's a hit, man. Boom. Oh, that's a 13. Oh, solid. Um, the second one's going to be 21. Definitely a hit. And a 5. 18 points of damage total. Very nice. This Eldritch Blast blasts into him uh, right against his body. Uh, you're still laying down on the ground, right? You yep. popped up. All right. Yep. You know, out of the tip of your loot, after you send this hypnotic pattern, he like shakes it off, uh, aware of your like your your trickery that you have in hand. Yeah. Sure. You could definitely can. And no. um, might as well. And then uh, you blast an eldritch blast at him uh, after he like realizes that you just kind of did some sort of trickery to the rest of his crew and uh, just slam this energy into his chest and uh, definitely hurt him big time. Uh, he's not stoked about that. And, um, 
Anything else that you want to do? Uh, I stood up. I'm going to just just jump my body. Or now, yeah, I'm just gonna jump my body over the bird. Okay. Um. Yep, that's perfectly fine. Now you jump on. Uh, kind of lunge over him. Make a human shield for him, and that's your turn. Uh, this orange guy uh, standing before you, he's definitely looking dizzy, he's swirling all around, looks like he's uh, feeling a little seasick. He might toss his cookies over the edge there. Luke Gange, you are up now. You feel your life kind of leaving your body, uh, holding on for every last bit of breath that you have in you. Uh, go ahead and roll that death save. Oh God! Seven. Oh God! I thought that was a one. I thought it was a one also at first. <laughs> I was like, sorry. <laughs> You're dead. Um. All right, Luke. You, your eyes get even heavier as you see complete darkness now around you, and you have visions of being back in the air elemental plane uh, with your your father. The the royal uh, Rob Ganj and um, your family there and, and how beautiful it was and how you long to get back there but you also know that you need to get more strength in your body to continue on with this fight and this journey that you have before you and help your friends, these new friends that you've made um, in the last few weeks, in this last month or two and know that they are your family now and you need to do everything that you can to get back to your feet, put that flight in your feathers again, and and get back fighting. Um, and that's your turn. Uh, it would be Narvi's turn now, but it seems like he's disappeared. He's uh, hasn't stuck around. Uh, this guy in the blue is up now. <clears throat> he's got Solrak down there. Definitely feeling a bit intimidated by this this. Ra this raging man who's just literally going he slashed through one of his uh, thug teammates his crewmates and just watched two arrows like pierce into his chest and he just flexes them out of his body and just keeps on walking like towards them like he's fucking Michael Myers or something and he's going to crank back at his, uh, his heavy crossbow and he's going to take another shot he rolls a natural 20 um, which is 12 points of piercing damage into you, um, but once again, you just, uh, you are raging and hawking out, and uh, you just completely rip this one out of your chest as you feel it goes a little bit deeper in than the previous two, and you just rip it out and you throw it over at the uh, docks into the water. Uh, that's 6 points of damage to you. Uh, instead of the 12, of course, because you're raging. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then um, he rolls a, he cranks back, shoots another one, rolls a nine to hit. So that one, uh, he's scared shitless of you, to be honest. He just completely misses that shot. Um, and it's your turn. Oh, it's on, boy! And I run up and then I swing. Talent time! And you slash, and uh, it hits his armor, and um, doesn't pierce through it though at all. As he just like kind of scoots back a little bit, trying to get out of the way. Now one Slayer. Oh, fifteen hit. Fifteen is a hit. Yeah, buddy. And that's a nine damage hair. Nine points of damage slashing into him. Uh, he's definitely. Feeling the pain from that, and uh, you see a little bit of blood start um, getting into the fabric of his his shirt and pulling out of the leather armor that he has on. Anything else that you uh, want to do? And I'll use uh, I'll use my second win to regain one d10 plus four HP. Awesome, man. Go for it. Just like right in front of him, you like flex your yeah, muscles but... and then like downwards and then upwards and like just scream in his face ah! and you just feel this surge of energy just course through your veins and like you're like ready to fucking go again like 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 nothing's yeah. ever happened in the first place love it dude um all right this guy in the black 
Uh, oh, how much damage did you do? I didn't mark it for some reason. It was 18, right? Uh, nine damage. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Wilmore. I meant my bad. Uh, uh was it was it was it was one. 13 and 5, 10, yeah. 13, yeah, then it was a 5, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, you are lying over Luke Gons, right? Yeah. Yep. So he's uh, just going to swing down at you. Damn, man. 5 to hit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wiggle worm, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> man, 9 to... <laughs> this whole fight on the ground. I should have just come in and just wormed around. And a 9 to hit. That's a wiggle, wiggle. Well, um, no, actually, you are on the ground now that you say that. That's advantage. In college, I called you Wiggles for years. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Sixteen to hit, and then uh, still wiggles. And, 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 and then fourteen guy, uh, to hit. Yeah. It's all Wiggles. Yeah, it's all Wiggles. Yep. No, Luke. He's it was, it's the black guy, Luke. Is that the, the, the black guy? the black circled guy? <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one with the black circle around it. Okay. Yeah, that one's still showing right next to... Yeah, that he can hit him, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hit one square, pretty much. Think about it that way. You can hit any uh, square uh, okay. around you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alright, this guy in the purple down here is up now. Uh, He's backing up onto the deck. Uh, Yeah, he's terrified of Solrak. Takes a shot at him. Fucking a ten to hit, and oh, and then he loads the arrow back, terrified. You see him just wide-eyed, like scrambling for these bullets, <clears throat> and he rolls a five to hit. Ah! <laughs> All right, um, this cloaked figured guy is up now. He's uh just completely dizzy, has no idea where he's at. Uh, just seeing these swirling patterns in front of him, and yeah, that's. It's his turn. Wilmore, you're up, man. Um, so... Healing word on Mr. Ganj. Okay. So you've got six HP now, Bister. Oh, you, you, uh, you chant this, uh, these arcane words, and thank you for subscribing, whoever that was. You chant these arcane <laughs> words, and yeah. you guys see Luke Ganj's eyes just slowly open up and he takes <gasps> a deep breath in as Luke you were just having those thoughts in your head like I need to get this strength in me I need this fight in me this is my family and I need to protect them and you exhale as like you let's fucking go I'm ready to fight I'm ready to do this um and you look up and you see I, you see Wilmore standing there and uh you give him a nod and Wilmore no, I'm still I'm still laying on top of him yeah uh, you're still, you're still like straddling him. <laughs> I'm straddling him. Yeah. <laughs> I love That's it. Awkward. <laughs> uh, yeah, Luke Gunn's just a little wide-eyed more so because of that now. Um, and yeah, it's still your turn. That was a bonus action. So so I'm um, so boom healing word. I want to say to him, uh, the ones that are sleeping don't hurt them, and I'm gonna roll off him get on my back over here yep. and just like double spider shot this guy with a uh, uh, Eldritch Blast. Go for it, man. I'm an inspiration on that one. I was going to say, don't forget you have inspiration. Yup. I've hit everything since I, you know, wasn't dead. <laughs> 13. That's a miss though, right? Uh, no, 13's a hit on this guy. 13's hit? Yeah. I'll take it. Is it 12? 12 points of damage. Ooh. This energy courses through him. Still standing, though. I got one more. Fifteen. Fifteen definitely hits. <laughs> Eldritch Blast shoots. Oh. Laying down on your back. Ooh. Thirteen. Big hit. Uh, this one, actually, it knocks him back uh, five feet um, just from the sheer force of this Eldritch Blast. And he wasn't expecting it coming from you lying down. Uh, shoots right out of the, the head of your loot right in his direction and oh man he's he's looking super hurt now if the uh roll back does uh is that an opportunity attack for the bird we uh go for it i'll let you i'll let you take one pierce at him oh nat 20. <laughs> and with that glue ganj sees this this uh Zentarum thug scooting back. He reaches up for his Lightbringer by his side, picks it up real quick, and 
pierces through, right through his heart, and you can feel the vibration in your hand through to your elbow of his heart beating until it stops, and then you slowly pull it back out, and you just see him fall to his knees and down to the ground. Uh, he's dead. I will now stand up. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, this... I'm just going to look at Luke yeah. and say, don't hit him. <laughs> Leave them sleeping. Love it. Um, awesome. Your your health is one, right? Yes. Okay, because it says forty. It says forty five on here, but uh, I've, I've got it open on both screens, and it's it's not. It's all good. Through. I don't know why. Oh, it, you have to update it on the um, above VTT. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I like click to, it somewhere for it to actually update. Yeah. Uh, when you do it Fine. on the character sheet thing, Luke Guns, where are you going? Oh, uh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Yep, I'll do it now. Are you flying or something? You, you, no, I didn't move him. Oh, someone yeah, did. Yeah, I think something happened. Yeah, some, uh, something happened. Yep, there you go. That's better. Cool. And Logan gave you okay, a concentration you. check too. I love that. Uh, <laughs> even though you don't need it. Okay, so you guys see that one dude uh, to the south of you, still feeling super dizzy, throwing around. Luke Gons, you see your opportunity as you're lying there on your back to potentially get up and join the rest of the fight. Yes, sir. And so I am going to, you know, kind of corral Chattington with my feathers and just whisper, thanks for saving my life, buddy. And I'm going to lay hands on both of us. Cool. And I'm going to do 10 for myself. And uh, actually, I'll do 8 for myself and 10 for Chattington. So, a total of 18. 18 total? Love it. You yeah. guys uh, feel this surge of energy of, of this life force go th through your body and uh, get a little pep in your step. Uh, see, actually, like some of those wounds that you have on your body actually start to like uh, heal themselves a little bit um, by magic. And yeah, you're ready to get this fight going. So, Luke Ange, that was your action. I'm going to, you know, whisper this chatting to now. Let's go help our. Uh smelly old buddy over there and I'm gonna fly over here and uh, look at the guy that Solrak is facing and hit him with an Eldritch Blast. Um, so that is an action. Uh, so you're I, not gonna be able to... But I still can't, I can't move? You can move, yeah, moving is totally fine. But, um, but you can't Eldritch Blast. Isn't, that's a cantrip though, I can use that as a bonus action, didn't you say? No. Uh, um, you can use a cantrip. If you want to use two spells as in a turn, you can use a cantrip and a bonus action spell. Yeah, my healing word is a bonus action. Oh, okay. Um, since your your touch thing, your lay on hands, is an action, you can only use a bonus gotcha, action gotcha. right now, which you have you know, a spiritual weapon you could do. Um, is it still out? We'll, we'll say it is. I'll pop it back up. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to see how far I'm able to move that. My wiggling Cause it, cause it, 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 it stays out for a minute, and it's not like concentration. And it doesn't say that like it goes away when you're cool. unconscious yeah, or anything. Was, so, sure. yeah. But yeah, so I'm going to move. I'm going to move it on to the guy. All right. Well, then I'll stay put where I am, and then I'll move it to the guy next to Solrak, and give him a little tickle with the tentacle. Okay, you can only move it 20 feet. I thought it said 60 feet. 60 feet is the range that you have when you first have it, but when you can use it as a bonus action to move it, you can move it up to 20 feet. I see that. Motherfucker. Go for the purple, uh, guy. purple guy. Yeah, yeah, that's totally fine. Put it in, like, in front of him. Up. Up one more. There you go. There you go. Alright. Phew. 21. 21. Woo! Slaps into him with his tentacle. He doesn't even see it coming. Just wet, sloppy, juicy tentacle hits him in the back of the head. Nine, Nine points of damage, and he flounders around a little bit on the on the deck, and uh, catches it himself. And he looks back, and yeah, it sees his fucking tentacle there. Um, and then yeah, that's your turn. You don't want to move. Uh, no, I'll stay put. Okay. Um, it would be Narvi's turn. Seems like once again, like I said, seems like he's he's gone. Uh, this blue guy, he's uh, got his crossbow out, but he's so close to uh, Solarak now that he actually just 
throws it down on the ground and he pulls out his mace and he goes to smack you with it. Uh, still terrified of you, apparently, because he rolls a 10. <laughs> I will enjoy killing you, my friend. And then he rolls a natural 20. Oh. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> um, and he does... Uh, he smacks you in, t- in your head with uh, your your skull helmet with his mace. Does eight points of damage on you, um, but you shake it off. And it's gonna, only, it's only four points actually. I'm gonna scream out, "No, bitch!" And that's gonna be a bardic inspiration from from the uh, peanut gallery. Okay, so uh, you're just negating him. That's hitting that's it. A, that's yeah, no, no. What's a D8, so right? Damage. Yeah, the D8, and then you just back that from the damage. Okay. And then I think he gets half. And so it was six, so it would have been no damage, essentially. Yeah. Well, so, well no, so, it's, so it was eight, so it's six, so it's two damage, so it's one damage. Or no, I, I'm, I'm, I, got, I got rage, so the eight would have been four damage. But, he's, yeah, but, he, no, but he, he does it to the dice number. So yeah, yeah so that's uh, right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So it's, it's one damage. From the dice. Yeah, so okay, I'll take it. Cool. Yeah, no, that's that's still great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you hear the ten. <laughs> <laughs> he hears this uh, the the halfling in the back there you say something obscene, something totally unnecessary, and it kind of slips slips him up from taking this massive hit that he's about to do. Uh, hits you on the part of your helm that doesn't do as much damage as he was expecting. It's like the head of the mace doesn't hit your helm. It's actually a little bit of the handle, so it just kind of rings out a little bit. It's a minor annoyance for you, but nothing you can handle. Can't handle. Um, it is now your turn. So, uh, so I was just looking over at Chattington with a big smile on my face. I saying, thanks, Chattington! And all of a sudden, I <laughs> turn over to that guy and give him the Hulk Hogan point. You! It's talent time here! Da, 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 da. That's a 26. Yeah, <laughs> 26 definitely hits. Right. Uh, nine damage here. Nine points of damage slashes into him. Um, it's still down, standing. And that's a 23 here. Yeah, buddy. 23 is a hit. With 15 Ooh. damage. God Ooh. damn. Yeah, that one, um, you slice into him. And it cuts right through um, over his shoulder, and you see his arm kind of start dangling a little bit, like you slice through an artery or something that was like holding his arm to his body, essentially. And it just like looks like it's a dangly mess right there. He can't lift it up, can't pull it up at all. It's just you just see this blood pulling down from his uh, his shoulder, down his chest, and down his arm. Uh, and he looks up at you. And says, Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> there is no mercy in hell, son. <laughs> oh man, inspiration, Solrec. <laughs> that was good. All right, purple guy is up now. He just saw that happen. Um, he's got this tentacle f- flying all around behind him. He loads up another um, arrow in his crossbow, and he cranks back and shoots at Solrec. Damn, another natural twenty. Um. Mm. And he shoots at you with it. Um, it's got quite some force behind it. Uh, as it pierces into you, uh, it was a, I rolled a nine total, so you get four points of damage. These are some weak crits, though. I'm sorry. Are you still doing like the first one is is max damage? I'm not doing that for myself actually, but eh. I could. Maybe sometimes I will. Maybe sometimes I won't. I like the randomness okay. of the dice roll. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, 14 to hit on that one. So that arrow uh, just flies over your shoulder and crashes into one of the crates behind you on the on the docks. Um, and that's his turn. This guy up here, not a clue in the world what's going on. A little more, you're up. <laughs> Hold on one second. Gotta go back outside. Not a clue in the world. All right, so <laughs> I am going to... They're sleeping, so I'm just going to make a beeline over to here. Yep. And then I'm going to um, hit the guy with an Eldritch Blast that's on Zolrak. 15? Uh, yeah, that's definitely a hit. Oh, 
four damage. Uh, four <laughs> damage. Um, that one hits him from the back, and you see this energy is just kind of coursing through him, and just enough, you know, you knew it wasn't too anything too crazy, but this guy must have been so weak that he just falls down to his knees right in front of Solrak and collapses and dies. I stare at Solrak, and I just do just a big old Hulk Hogan, just, just kind of muscle, and I just look at him, give me a point. And then, <laughs> and then Eldritch Blast, the other guy that's up. 14? Uh, 14 hits. So apparently YouTube is shutting down rhythm, so I guess I just got rid of it and it wasn't working, and now I can't get it back. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, 5 to hit, or 5 damage, five, rather? Yep. yep. Cool. Uh, Eldritch Blast slams into him. Uh, does five points of force damage as this purple, beautiful, plasma-like energy just kind of rides all throughout his body. Um, anything else that you want to do? Mm, I've moved to that. Oh, as a as a bonus action, mm -hmm. I am going to once per short rest one creature. Do I have to kill it? And he regains five feet if it dies. No, it's just yeah, hexblade's curse is if anyone yeah. kills it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a hexblade curse on him. Beautiful. Should have probably done that before I did all that, but it doesn't. Yeah, whatever. Oh well. It doesn't matter. All right. Let me make that bigger. Cool. He is cursed. Oh, I won't stay on that spot. Oh well. I get it. Um. Okay, and that's your turn. That's it. Cool. Uh, one dude up there by Yuli in the orange. He's still uh, all dizzy as shit. And it's your turn. I'm gonna uh, run on over to this purple dude and try and finish him off with the Lightbringer. Go for it. Come flying on over and come piercing down 13. with the Lightbringer. Um, and yeah, 13's a hit. Nice. Oh, shit. Hold on. Eighteen. Eighteen points of damage, nice. And then Still I'm gonna standing. come at it again. Yep. Fourteen. Fourteen's a hit, man. Ooh, and fourteen damage. As you pierce the light bringer into him and pull it back out, dude just falls down to his knees, you see blood just spilling out on the wood grain of the deck all around you and just soaking it into there, getting completely saturated and that dude is fucking dead. Um, and around you guys now, you see just the the remaining two gentlemen at the top, the cloaked man with the two short swords um, who was doing quite some heavy damage to the two of you, Luke Ganja and Wilmore, and then the, <clears throat> another one of these Zentarum thugs um up there, they're both in lost in a, in a daze, this hypnotic pattern. They're just like standing there, like you know, at the end of Mortal Kombat when it says "finish him," and one of the guys is standing there, like and like has his hands to his side and his head is swirling all around. And then you uppercut him into the spikes. Uh, yeah, they're they're just standing there doing the, this head spinning around kind of thing right now, uh, bobbing all around. And they don't know what's going on. Um, for at least the next that was four rounds, five rounds. Um, yeah, it's 10 rounds. So it's 10 rounds, so they have 30 more seconds that Wilmore maybe let you guys know that these guys are under their spell. Well, actually, we'll finish out the uh, the initiative round real quick. So, Solrak, anything that you want to do? All right, I'm going to run out to the boat. Hey, with, uh... hey, hold on. I don't think I was done. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can go uh, do something else. I'm going to... Uh, use my harness divine power as my bonus action and uh, let's see so I regain one expended spell slot uh, yep either second or first level yeah and I'll do a, a second level one very nice alright and uh, now I'm done very nice soul rack thank you you see uh, this one last guy after Luke Gange flies over there and pierces his light, bringing to him, falls to his knees and start bleeding out and dies there on the boat. Um, there's quite a crowd 
that started watching what's going on around here now. And um, yeah, it's your turn. I'm gonna move on to the boat and stand between Chattington and the bird. Say, what's up, boys? And then, uh. Uh oh. Let's wait for that. I don't like the sounds of that. Are we still in initiative or. Soul Rack, anything else that you want to do? Say to them or anything? I say, let's, perhaps let's kill this one henchman and leave the other one alive here. Which one? All right, pick. You can drop that initiative, <laughs> but just remember, or maybe don't remember, it doesn't matter. It's up to Wilmore. So like, as soon as we drop out of initiative, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna get back into initiative to hit one. Okay, well then we don't have to drop out if you don't want. If you want to keep on going, then we can keep it going. Yeah, yeah, because I mean they're both gonna wake up in 30 seconds. All right, Wilmore, you're up then. All right. Um. Do, 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 do. um yeah, I'm gonna shoot um the the funky looking dude. All right. The uh the one, on the one the that killed me. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, and, and as like you know, you saw Solrak running up here. You guys could hear the roar of that Manticore in the background, and you guys remember for a second, like, oh shit, there is that going on too. And like I said, um, last game, it looks pretty injured. Um, definitely not as like abrasive, and uh, you know, obviously it should be flying around right now if it could, but it doesn't seem like it's able to. But um, that thing is definitely there and covered in blood. And doesn't seem to be any men on that ship as well. At least that you can tell. So yeah, Wilmore, you're up. Go ahead and do whatever you're going to do to this guy. I'm going to Eldritch Blast 1. 14. Um, 14 misses. Oh. 15. 15 hits. 6. 6 points of damage as this Eldritch Blast slams into him and uh, you guys see him kind of shake out of his uh, stupor, he's like complete, you know, he was all shaken up right there um, in, a, in a complete dizzied state had no idea what's going on after this Eldritch Blast slams into him you see him shake his head and he shakes himself out of it and he flings down his short swords to his side and twirls them around a little bit and uh, kind of gives us a, a sneering look to you all um, anything else you want to do? Um, gonna, how is it, um, the way, how did I get up from the deck? Did I come up this little area here or this little area over here? Uh, like from like, oh, yeah, when I was it. under deck and then I came up the, on the top of the deck. Sorry, I hit you. Oh, I just I, disappeared. Um, you came up from like this. You have any questions? You don't have to play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna move behind Solrak and just just kind of stand there behind him. I gotcha. All right, um, that's your turn. It's now Luke Anja's turn. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, I. Oh, you gained your health back, right, uh, Wilmore? Yep, yep, yep. I took my five. Cool. Oh, Nate. Um, on the thing, it it says everyone's back. Alive, I don't know. Yeah, we know that. those are the only two that are dead. Okay, alright. Um, so I'm gonna run up to that that dude and come at him with my Lightbringer trying to end his ass. Alright, go for it, man. Oh, 22. Ah, uh, 22 is definitely it. I have 16. 16, piercing into him. I uh, definitely, uh, let you know that that hurt him, but he's not giving up. Alright, let's let's do it again. Oh man, that was on freaking twenty two. Oh. That's eight. Uh and uh you go to pierce that one again and it uh you hit his body and it just hits his studded leather and it stops, doesn't go through all the way. Alright. Uh, and then I'm gonna yeah. Oh, I'm gonna move my uh my tentacle spiritual weapon up to him. And uh, slap him with that. Give him the old slappity slap. Go for it. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, uh, seven. Uh, seven. He uh, ducks out of the way as this tentacle comes flying over his head and goes to slap him. Uh, just barely missing him. Okay, Solrak, what you got, bud? All right, yeah. I'm gonna run up here, and it's talent time. Ba -ba 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 -da -ba -ba That's a twenty-two. Yeah. Twenty-two's a hit. And that is an eight damage here. Eight damage. Um. Okay. Let me just real quick. <clears throat> Solrak. The end of last round, you didn't attack anyone, did you? Yeah, he um, ran up. Your rage ends then. Okay. So you don't get that extra two damage then. And you're not. Okay. Because your rage ends early if you're knocked unconscious, or if your turn ends and you haven't attacked a hostile creature since your last turn, or taken damage since then. Son of a bitch. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you could, well, I, you could okay. rage again if you wanted to, or you could just keep it, you know, keep it as is. Totally up your. Totally your call. I'll keep it as is. I'll keep it as is for now. All uh, right, so go ahead and slash again then if you want to. One Slayer! Oh! Oh yeah, that's a hit. Six hair. It's Dead. time. And that's eight damage hair. Hell yes. Uh, as Solrak comes running up, uh, just like you guys see him shoulder fucking running with these uh, long swords in his hand comes running and slashes down into him and does these massive hits into him and this guy is also pretty intimidated of Solrak and his uh, craziness and these his sword handling skills and yeah that looks like it hurt him pretty good is there anything else you wanted to do? No! I look at him saying I will enjoy draining your blood all over this boat ha 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 Man, you guys are getting super chaotic on me. I love it. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, this cloaked man—he's got his uh, short swords out, twirls them around in his uh, in his hands, and he goes and takes a slash down at you, Solrak, with one of them, and he rolls an 18 to hit, which is 18 in your armor class, right? That's what we just. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. So, so he does. Um, Five points of piercing damage, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. So, Rec, uh, I have our protection, so you get plus one on a saving throw. Good call on that. Oh, yeah. Alright. How much piercing damage did it take? Four? It was something like that. It was low. Yeah. And you take. I'm. S uh, messed up my math. <laughs> when you asked me that question. Um. It was eight. I'm just gonna reroll it. Two. Fuck it. One. I hate you. Well, you, you just screwed yourself. No damage. <laughs> get 25, 25 points of poison damage. Right. As you uh, feel this slash. Uh, hit your your flesh, and the uh, tip of the blade stings like deeply, and uh, you feel this this poison start coursing through your veins and your bloodstream. Uh, you're not poisoned, but definitely it was like this like burning acid like uh, burn on your skin. He raises up another uh, short sword and he goes to slash it down on you again. It rolls a 19 to hit. Jesus. Um, he does eight points of piercing damage, and then another oh. constitution saving throw. I'll bardic inspiration that, so okay. roll a d8 against d8, it. d8, sure. Or a cutting words. It. Um, six, so... Two. Two. And then con, Thank you. con saving throw for you again. And plus one, so 13... Uh, another 24 points of poison damage. Jesus. Um, 
yeah, as you, this this short sword slices through your your flesh, and it stings, man. It's a uh, like you don't want to make a face at this guy. Like you want to show like how tough and strong you are, but you kind of grit your teeth a little bit, and uh, man, it, it's burning you. You just like feel this this poison just um one slice slash on your right arm one slash on your left arm and it's it stings man um and he is um yeah that's his turn one more you're up uh sorak has one health one hp left right is that what it is sorak yeah. is it is it one or are you dead yep. or one okay i just want to make sure you're still no, alive. I have one. Right. as long as you're alive that's fine wow um <laughs> Is there any loose rope that I can see? Is that my action to look? I was gonna say, if you want to make a perception check, um, to ah. be able to grab it, um, yeah, to be able to find loose, you might have some on you though, right? Uh, uh, if I do, I don't have it in my inventory, so no, I have I'm gonna go with no. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. So we are gonna do. <clears throat> right, this guy's gotta go. Um, level two dissonant whispers on the guy that's alive. Okay. So that's a fourteen wisdom throw. Fourteen whiz. Um, D twenty. That's a natural one. Perfect. So then that's twelve plus he runs away. So two opportunity attacks. Nice. Yes. Yeah. And whatever you want to do for a natural one. It's a 14. And a 23 here. Uh, 23 hits. Uh, 10 damage here. Well, yours doesn't hit. 14 doesn't hit? No. I thought it did on him. No, not on him. Not that guy. Wilmer rolled a 14 on one, and then 15 on the next, and the 15 hit, but the 14 didn't. Ah, because I thought I hit him with 13 before. So you hit a henchman. If you did, that was my mistake, and I'm taking the points back. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Alright, so, Solrak, that was 10 points of damage on him? Yeah. Okay. 22 total. Oh, fucking not dead yet. 22 total. Uh... He hears this uh, discordant melody going through his head, and he starts uh, running backwards, holding his ears, He's like, no, 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 trying to like just block it out, uh, do anything he can to just get this terrible, terrible noise from playing in his, in his brain, and uh, he starts running backwards, falling backwards, so I take a slash at him, and as he does, he uh, hits him with the talon, longsword, and the it slashes right through his chest, and the cloaked man uh, tumbles backwards a little bit, hits the edge of the boat, and plops over the edge of the boat, uh, falls down, splashes in the water, and um, you guys, uh, yeah, his body is flipped over the edge of the boat, and he's dead, floating in the water. Then I'm going to say... Look uh, over at his floating body. I told you so. ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> I'm gonna go, um, fuck this noise, manticore, and I'm gonna jump in the little hole. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come up here, and I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna go back under deck. Okay. And then that's your turn? That's my turn, so I'm under, Lucan's. under second deck now. Gotcha. Alright, and so I'm gonna turn to Solrak and say, you heard the man and I'm going to run over to that hole and drop down into it as well. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to use a potion of healing on myself. Okay. It's a D4, 2D4 plus 2. Five. Five points of health back to you as you goop, 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 go up down that health potion. Uh, and you book it on downstairs to the lower deck. Um, that's your turn. Yep. Soul Rack. Uh, I'm also going to share your health potion. Let's, uh, 
Um, hold on, I'm freezing. There we go. Oh shit. How much do I get here? Potion of healing. 2d4 plus 2. I'm gonna chug two of those. Go for it. Sixteen back. Cool. Uh, I'll just chug the third one. <laughs> um. Okay. I mean, you definitely can if you want. I know Luke has some more lay on hands, and there's other healing stuff if you want to save those for other times. But I mean, I'm not telling you what to do. All right. Then I'll save it. I'll save it. I'll save it. I'm cool. Cool. Uh, and then I'll run back in. I'll run into the hole with them. Okay. You guys, all uh, run downstairs to the bottom deck of this uh, ship. Alright, let me go ahead and switch on over then. I'm gonna add you all back in here. Everyone but this nerd. Oh wait, did Soul Rack get added? There you go. In the initiative. It's weird, I don't see him on my DM. There we go. There he is, yeah, he just popped in. All right, so um, guys, <laughs> make your way down to this bottom level of uh, this ship that was ran by these Zentarum thugs and Narvi the Red Wizard and this other cloaked gentleman. Um, see a bunch of boxes down here. As I told Wilmore earlier, it's it's pretty dimly lit. You do have some light shining in here through these uh, side like windows where like there might be like uh, you, know, you could imagine maybe cannons or, or ballistas or something were placed out of. Um, and uh, so you do have a little bit of light in here. And from that light, what you can see is that there's like a decent amount of boxes uh, down here. It looks like like standard trade crates. Um, pretty much you see on your the north side of the boat, there looks like a double set of double doors. And on the south side, there's another set of double doors. But Everything that, that's down here looks like it's pretty much packed away. Um, trading goods um, that you guys would imagine the Zentarum carrying around. Um, assorted barrels and crates, all wooden. Well, that was a bad idea. Hmm. Yeah, so that what are we trying to do have. about this uh, manacore here? And I'm as, as I say that, I'm going to kind of like poke my head in these boxes to specifically, like, see if I see anything specific and then that I might did, be able to use or take. Did anybody see the uh, thing that we came here for? The, the deca the guy? that I gave him? No. Did he take I, it? And the I, guy, I think, I think, Narvi, think came down here. Didn't he? Shouldn't he be down here? So, nah, he vanished. So, I'll say it again. What you guys saw, I've I think Wilmore might have been unconscious, which is probably why he's asking this. Uh, I think Luke Gange maybe saw it, or maybe, I forget which one of you two saw it. Maybe it was just Solrak that saw it, actually. Uh, the cloaked figure said something to Narvi, and Narvi, like, nodded and then did something with his hands below, like, at the deck level. And, yeah, it was Wilmore. Wilmore saw a, like, box kind of gravitate up towards, from the bottom of the deck, like, almost like it was, like, like something mechanical like automatic that like gyrated it to lift up and he took this black uh ornate like carved crate with onyx fixtures on it um and he took that and then instantly disappeared and what wilmore saw when he was disguised as the kenku um saw the the cloaked uh narvi hand to the cloaked man the do decahedron and they put oh, it. Oh, I saw that. I saw it. Sorry, like saw that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Never mind. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I thought. I thought they saw that. Oh, uh, well. Um. The the thing we came for is is gone. So, see, I got a boat on the other side of this boat, and I said we jump in that boat, and leave. 
and just forget so about bad. this mana core? I mean, are you in mana core yeah, mood? No, I mean, I'm <laughs> ready to fight this thing. If you are, we can try. I mean, we can go back, get Brutus, and come back. But, I mean, I think we at least need a, a little... A little rest. Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> I agree. I am hurting here. If that's if that works good. I mean, it is um. Can I go like? I guess that guy's probably alive by now. Um. <laughs> um. Let's I'm gonna go kill that guy here, or maybe no, he what? ran away. What? Yeah. What? Well, I, I tell you what. I'm gonna. I tell you what. Give me one second, guys. I'm gonna put on my invisibility ring, and I'm just gonna kind of poke my head up out of the um, out of the hatch, and a see if that guy's still there, and then b see what's what's going on with the manticore. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and perception, and Luke, you as well. Solid eight. Solid eight. So you um slip on the invisibility ring, disappear out of uh, plain sight, and you sneak on up the stairs a little bit and poke your head up. And as you do, you hear uh, footsteps stomping on the on the deck, just as you're like popping it up. And you, all right, got shit. So go ahead and uh, actually give me a, a stealth roll as well. Do I get advantage, I guess, because I'm visible? Sure. No? Well, no, because you're just popping this thing up, so it's like, oh, yeah. that's part of it. That That's not Seven. invisible. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you pop it up, and you see this last Centarum thug booking it down the, the ramp off the boat, down the docks, around the corner, and out of your sight. He has ran away from you guys as quickly as he possibly could. Um, looks like he maybe actually gathered some of... Uh, some arrows, some bolts off the ground because he's a scavenger like that. This guy, and um, yeah, he just he just booked it and ran. Um, and so you're like, all right, that's cool. And then you go and look over at the Manticore, uh, that boat. What's going on there? And you see um, a couple of the the dock ward guards that work down here in Waterdeep, uh, kind of all s starting to surround, and a bit of a crowd of people is starting to surround the boat as well, definitely keeping a bit of a distance, and the guards look like uh, they're scared to do anything about this. Um, but this manacore, as I mentioned, he's looking very bloody, very beat up, uh, pretty hurt. Um, still, you don't see any signs of any other life, uh, humans or anything on, on this boat though. It just seems like this bloody, bloodied, beat up manticore is on there, just like roaring, uh, scaring all the people there, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty fucking terrifying of a scene. Hmm. So I'm gonna go back down and I'm going to say, well, um, all of our friends are gone. And I really don't want to mess with that manticore. I do have possibly one idea if you guys Go on. So I think there's some rope up there. And if we can get that one guy out of the water, the guy that killed everybody, maybe we can talk to him. Bring him back to life kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, if there's rope up there to use, then by all means, let's. I, I definitely want to search his body. I also have rope I have too. I have 50 feet of rope, so I can give you rope. Uh, but Nate, wanna... Nate, I also rolled a 20, Nate. by the way. Yeah, I saw that. I was just waiting for the solid end. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I'll let you guys know now. He's uh, you you popped up there and you thought about this idea. Um, getting this guy. You, you look over the edge and he's face down in the water. Oh. So he's dead. Mm. Yeah, he wouldn't be very friendly if I woke him up. Okay. Luke Gons, you look around at the boxes and crates and everything around you. Uh, it's kind of being nosy. You know, maybe maybe there's some straw or some newspaper in here you can make a nest out of. Um, but you, you are poking around these boxes and you, you pop one of them open and it seems like you know, same kind of trade goods you would imagine the Zentarum having, assorted weaponry, um, 
things like short swords and arrows and bullets and quivers and crossbows and things like that um, pop open a couple more crates and you see that there's like uh, bootleg liquor bottles in there it looks like they have been like putting like like their own labels over top of like other cheaper bottles of liquor and um, th but there are five smaller barrels um, in one corner that, that kind of gets your attention mm. um, they're over here in this corner uh, they get your attention because, yeah, like I said, they're a bit smaller in size than the other ones. They seem like they're custom built. Um, and on them, you see what is branded, an, a branded image of like a uprising black dragon kind of burned into the wood. Hmm. I'm going to move over there and check to see if there's anything in those barrels either. Okay. You go to uh, investigate those barrels and check them out, see what's going on. Like I said, you see this, uh, this symbol of a rising dragon that's been burned onto it. And you go to open up the barrel, and it doesn't seem to have like the normal kind of latching system that most of these other ones are built with and constructed with. This one takes a little bit of time for you to figure out and uh, eventually you, you place your hand on the top of it and you give it a, a twist and again like the box on the top of the deck this automatic system just rises from this uh, narrow narrow kind of skinny barrel and um, it opens up and that top that slides up and lifts up carefully um, you see there's like a packed compartment just like a almost like like the when you go to the bank, the uh, drive through bank, and you put your money in that thing, and it shoots up the thing, it almost pops up in a thing like that. <laughs> is there... I'm going... Is there anything in there that I can pull out and kind of check out? Yeah. Um, go ahead and make a, a, a uh, dex check for me. Five. Five. Oof. Um, so you uh, you're trying to find like a way to get this compartment open, and you finally uh, fidget around a little bit, and part of it pops open, and rolling out along the floor is a vial uh, containing a black, oily liquid emitting like a dull glow. Does the vials? Do I see that the vial says anything on it? There are no distinguishable marks on the vials themselves. They are like okay. a, like glass, like cylindrical vials with a uh, with a cork uh, topper on them. I'm going to kind of study the vial and the contents inside and as well as the art that's on the barrels and kind of see if I can maybe put two and two together and figure out if maybe there's a correlation between the two and like what that that is okay so, so let's, let's like an arcana check yeah let's go ahead and do that so you you pick up the the vial and you're like invest you're like checking it out. Yeah. Okay. Fifteen. So you uh, you pick up the vial and you're holding it up to the light and like I said it's it's oily looking it's 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 thick it's very uh, it's heavy it's very dense um, and it's glowing with this weird gray dull glow and you're checking it out and it doesn't seem it's so indistinguishable from any kind of other liquid that you've ever seen in your life ever before but as you're holding it you, you feel this this terrible terrible like vibration through your hand and through your head and you become extremely nauseous and all of a sudden this black oily ichor starts pulling out of your mouth and you just vomited all onto the floor in front of you. So. 
and you just keep on puking up this oily black ichor. Just I'm like, gonna react to that. <laughs> go for it. Um, I'm just gonna kind of run, run up behind him and um, just kind of start smacking him on the back to see if he can kind of get it all out. Uh, yeah, you run up, you start smacking him on the back, and it just keeps on coming out. It seems like it's a lot of this vile, like terrible. It's it stinks like putrid, black, gross liquid that's just pulling out of Luke's. He's just puking it up onto the the wooden uh, floor all around is he you guys. Holding something? He's holding this uh, vial. Is it is it uncapped or is it capped? Right. It's now? capped. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of like roll it back towards those barrels. Okay. And you, just kind of get it out of my hands. Drop it and roll it back onto the ground towards the barrels, and you spit up the last bit of this this black ichor, um, and just wipe it from your beak. And you are a dirty looking fucking bird right now. You got black pulling or down around your face. You got all this. Dark red so blood stain. <laughs> <laughs> you got all this dark red blood stain like all around your chest and your feathers, like and on your like your wings, and uh, yeah, you are like in a, a weird state of mind right now. Well, that was fucking gross, boys. Note to self: don't touch that vial. Ew. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to pull up my compass and uh, cast detect magic. Okay. And then you? I'm just gonna kind of walk the. I'm gonna walk it end to end. See, see what it says. All right. You uh, pull out the compass, uh, start casting detect magic, and the needle starts paying like crazy as soon as you get to the vials. Um, but it's a magic that is unknown to you. Hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go, well, well, that's weird. Uh, and then I'm gonna kind of just paste the whole. I'm gonna paste the whole, whole bottom of the ship, all the way in here, yeah. go all the way back. You paste the whole perimeter of the boat, and each time you get further and further away from those five custom-made barrels with the with the dragon woods uh, stamped onto it, it's the the needle on the compass slowly just you know starts drifting to the left as if um, the pulse of magic isn't nearly as strong. But as soon as you start walking back towards this man, it's uh this is like ringing off the charts. Hmm. Well, um, these are interesting. There's a could be a dark evil magic here. Could be related to everything. I mean, um. If they made it, they might have been smuggling this. Maybe the uh, Lord's Alliance would like to know. All I'm saying is I'm not picking that thing up again. Maybe we can uh, wrap it up in something so we don't have to directly touch it now. Yeah, maybe we could like put it in another box. Yeah. How much? Uh... Uh, hold on. 10 feet, 10 pounds. Um, how big are they? I did not realize I was muted for some reason. The barrels themselves or the vials? Um. Oh, so, so so it's 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 vials inside of a barrel. Yeah, like I said, it's a interesting like custom made barrel. Like the way that when you twist the top, it slides up like it pulse like it moves up All by right. itself, and then it inside of that is like one of those like bank drive through things kind of, and then mm -hmm. inside, if you were to open that up, there was carefully nestled in there a vial. Okay, so why don't we just take uh, one of the barrels? Yeah, I was gonna say, let's do that. Can you just put it back in that little bank looking like compartment and just take the compartment? Oh, we'll just take one of the ones. It's, uh, yeah. it, it's custom built into the, the, the whole thing. Yeah, like, gotcha, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, why don't we just, yeah, just pick up a barrel and take it back to the back? Sounds good to me. Yeah. Chattington, what was it again that you gave the uh, Xanterum? Some, some circle thing that I touched it and it gave me magical powers for the day. It was nice. Mm. It was nice. It was 
it's gone now. Alright, well let's do it. Yeah. Alright, so um you guys wanna walk past the manticore, I guess? <laughs> see see if it works? <sighs> or do you no, wanna try shimmy out this window into the into the boat that's on the side of the ship? Uh, can I fit through that window? I don't think I can fit through a boat window. God. I don't know. Can you? We'll take a look at the window, I guess. Yeah, no, um, so I can fit through the window. It's, 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 right, it's, it's well, a tight, tight squeeze. It's like probably, it's a three foot by three foot square probably, but you can fit through it. All right. Let's do it then. Yeah, if you guys, uh, why, why, why don't, uh, you head down, and then I'll toss the barrel to you, and then we'll all head down. Or no, maybe the bird can just fly it down. That'd be a lot easier. That's a good idea. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Let's do it here. Yeah, let's do it. All right, all right. So, um... And got, um, before I leave the ship, I'm going to um, cast self-disguise and turn myself into a Kiku again. Okay. Cool. All right, so Wilmer's looking like a Kenku. Uh, Luganger grabbing the barrel, and you're flying it out. Is that what I heard? Yep. Mm -hmm. How much does said barrel weigh? We'll say it weighs altogether. We'll say 50 pounds. Uh. So that's unfortunately too much weight for me to bear with everything else. Um. I can only carry maybe 33 more pounds. Solrak, would you be able to carry it then? A s uh, let's see, a small keg weighs 30 pounds. Yeah, so, uh, and that's empty. Yeah, well, well, do you have 20 pounds of stuff you can just give me? I mean, whatever. Just, like, I yeah, would just, like, work, like, like, he would, he gives me 20 pounds of stuff <laughs> for... For the fly down. That's cool. And then and then somebody else can carry it. After that's cool. That. All right. So yeah, that's what we'll do then. All right. Um. So you guys are making your way out of this boat then, and you're back to the docks. Yes. Yes. All right. Let me switch you on over. As you guys, yeah, you you collect that barrel, nice and fine. Uh. You left. Did you leave the? Did you put the vial back into that barrel, or and that's the one you're taking, or you just left that one? You're grabbing a freshie. Yeah, we're grabbing a freshie. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, you have to touch it. <laughs> all right, let's get you back into the docks. Okay, uh... yeah, okay yeah. So, so, so first, I would so like you open it up and it shoots up and it looks at you, right? Yeah. So like I would I would open it up to make sure something shoots up that it's in there. Yeah, it's there. Okay, all right. So, yeah, it's a freshie. You got it. All right, so that funny bullshit here. <laughs> you grab it, and inside of it is a, a rabbit. There it is. Oh my god, guys! <laughs> all right, so all these guys on the deck are obviously gone. Um, all right, and go ahead and place yourselves wherever you would be right now, and what your plan of action is, and then let's keep it going from there. Let's see what you guys are rolling from here. Whatever you want to do. So I do I see Brutus from here? Yeah, he's tied up on the dot, um, all the way back over. Where was it? It was early. It's like over here. Yeah, that's where he was. Where I don't see him he's, on my he's, screen. He's right, he's oh, right, right, he's here. right here. He's right there here. There he is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was like up here. <clears throat> when we left. Something. He was like right here. Yep. So um, okay. Uh, someone made them. Did you guys crawl? One of you guys crawled out the window? All of you crawled out the window? No one crawled out the window? And, uh, I think we were all going out the window into the boat. Okay, yeah, so there, yeah, there's that boat right there where that Wilmer's at. That's what that blue marker is. This blue marker is that boat, Solrak. Because he took that and crashed into that ship. So, um, alright, so what's the plan now? Well, let's get... Uh, we gotta get called Brutus over, too, yeah. Uh, um, hold on one second. Well, we can go back over to the Kenkus, um, hop see, off the ship. Yeah, no, you you stuff. look over and you notice that those Kenku, they, they are long gone. They have flooded. You, uh, took their ship, their, they, which was a ship that they were taking, 
and crash it in their ship, and you ca cause a bunch of attention to this area, and they were just being a bunch of thieves, and so they booked it. Alright, well then, if they're gone, then I'm just gonna fly over here, and then run and untie Brutus. Okay. And then, while they're doing that, uh, is the boat already in the water? Yeah, yeah, it's crashed up against... Okay, cool. This ship. So yeah, that's then, what that whole blue rectangle is right there, is gotcha, the ship. Gotcha, okay. So I'm going to untie him and say, all right, buddy, follow me. And we're going to head back towards the boat. And I'm going to have him jump into the water and swim on over. All right. So um, we, he, he does exactly we that. We are just coming back on the other side. <laughs> you know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were just going to go back over to here and then get off the boat. And then go about our business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that too. I like that. Unless y'all want to go on an adventure, we could be pirates. You guys want to be pirates? <laughs> I know we got one butt pirate on here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I say we get the fuck out of here as as fast as we can. Yeah, I don't want anything no. to do with that manticore. No. I'm sorry. So, I, I know it's very all... mysterious, but I don't want anything to do with it. So well, we all we all run over there then. Oh so, yeah, we take the boat over to here and then kind of go get Brutus right. with our with our keg. All right, you guys, uh, running down the docks with your keg, uh, with Brutus. Um, as you guys are running, um, everyone make a perception check for me real quick. Nah. Seven. Someone do better. All right, Solrak. Solrak, you notice a a black raven land on one of the wooden uh, beams at the edge of the dock, right about there where I just pinged, and it looks like it's staring over at you guys as you guys are like booking it down the docks, and you're watching it as you guys turn around, turn this corner, and keep on running. So I'm imagining you guys are running like that way where I just pinged. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this this raven turns its head and watches you guys the whole time, and then takes flight, flies off, and into the distance. Go on. I don't say anything yet, Hap, yeah, but I keep that in mind. Okay. Okay, so you guys are running out of the dock ward, I'm assuming, all together. Yep. Okay. Um, anywhere in particular that you're heading? Uh, who are we taking this barrel to? Who will be the best person? I, I don't know. Um, Maybe let's take it back to the bar and see if uh, what's his face knows anything about it. He is the oldest man ever. That is true. I like that idea. All right, so heading back to the yawning portal, it is. Yes, sir. Cool, 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 cool. That so, uh, fun. yeah, you guys uh start like hastily making your way out of the dock ward, kind of bumping shoulders with some of the other vendors and patrons around the area, uh, catching the last last stanky whiffs of the, the fish in the air and the, the dirty bay water and uh, the loud commotion that's going on there. You guys start you know, just pushing this barrel down the streets of Waterdeep and, and into the uh, South Ward district, and you guys make your way through the South Ward a little bit, uh, a little unnoticed. Go ahead and everyone make a d20 roll for me. One second. Let me go back out. That's fine. No rush. I thought we were traveling. <laughs> <laughs> roll a d20. Four. You don't have to. You don't want to. It's all good. I want to. Uh, Two. Oh. That's fine. Those are good numbers for this. Eleven. Okay. S Soul Rack, roll a d10. Die. Uh, yeah, I just, he died. I just have all these like random charts I have made. <laughs> Five. Five. It, it, keep, it keeps me on my toes too. All right, cool. All right, so you guys, uh, let's put you in the streets. Wild in the streets. The streets. All right, all right. Let's see. <laughs> Which 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 street one do I want? This one will work. Well, I 
guys tokens in here. We'll say you're like right about there. Get rid of Big Bird. Oh, these are the streets. You haven't seen this one yet. No. There you guys are. Cool. Um, so you guys make your way up through the South Ward, and f as you guys are getting to the uh, most northern part of the South Ward, about to get to the Castle Ward, um, you see a a woman lean out of her second story window and calls down to you all. Oh, hello down there, gentlemen. How are you? So a woman with kind of flowing uh, brunette hair. Um, She's wearing like a nice colored blouse, uh, white, and just kind of looking very uh, carefree. Uh, uh, hello? Who are you, lady? <laughs> oh, thank you. My name is Esther, and I'm an upcoming actress, and I'd love for you to come to my show later. Oh, God. Listen, lady. We already have one struggling artist here. And it's the half man. So, as you're doing a joint gig here, I don't want any part of it. We had a long day. I want to get out of here. Yeah. Um, I won't bother you anymore. I know how it is. You enjoy your day. Whoa, 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 whoa! What, what kind of act is this, my friend? Well, it's a disappearing act. <laughs> What's disappearing? Well, you have to come later and, sh and see for yourself. I can't give away the whole show. You're going to have to let me know where and when, my friend. Oh, you can um, f find me uh, in the North Ward at the Troll Skull Alley. Oh, Troll Skull. Absolutely, Astrid. You have a wonderful day now, okay? Oh, thank you, you too. And uh, she just waves off to you guys as you guys continue walking through the uh, entering the Castle Ward now. That sounds awful. Not going to that. Just so you guys know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, come on. He, he thought I wasn't a good actor, and here I am acting that I like you. Do we even oh! have the time to be going to see any any show like this? <sighs> fine, got, fine, fine. To do. No fun for you. As continue walking through the streets of the Castle Ward until eventually you make it to a familiar locale. The one and only yawning portal. And what time of day is it currently? Currently, it is in the afternoon. It is actually it's early evening at this point. I'm um, five o'clock, somewhere right around there, you know. And you guys are all in here already, sitting up at the bar. Cool. All right. Um, so you guys make your way into the Yawning Portal. Uh, once again, as always, the Yawning Portal has a lively crowd in here. All sorts of uh, adventurers, locals, uh, people traveling from all across Faerun and Sword Coast. Uh, got some lively music playing. Um, you see the the fireplace in the north side, the beautiful sculpted goblin head screaming. It's glowing bright with a, a flame that's keeping the room nice and warm. And um, I'm assuming that you guys are approaching the bar. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, you see the familiar and face no, of old Dernan. Covered in blood and shit, too. You absolutely <laughs> are. And uh, I got, what, like, black all over my... I'm, uh, yeah, it's it's, it's like, uh, body. it's like, it's like tar looking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not fun. Uh, you, but you see the familiar face of good old Dernan. Uh, he's uh, filling up wooden mugs for the patrons here. And uh, he turns around and sees you guys says, Welcome back, gentlemen. It's good to see you. Uh, I've never been more happy to see you, Dernan. Boy, could we use some beverages. Yeah, I'm not... Please, I'll take a Sorlac hat. Oh, he, you see him, like, breathe, like, heavily and, like, drop his head. Are you serious? Oh, if you only heard the type of day we had, you'd give me two of them half. Let me take a Sorlac. Uh, one Sorlac coming right up. Um, little man, anything for you? Ooh, I'll have a Brandy. Brandy? Ooh, she's a fine girl. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my feathered fella. Driver, though. 
<laughs> it's been one of those. Jeez. I know. <laughs> That's I'm like Jesus, Carlos. <laughs> the deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> the deep cut. One more, follow me on Instagram at Carlos Does the World. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anything for my feathered fella. You know, at Dern, it's been one of those days. Let me let me try one of those soul racks. You see, his jaw almost hits the fucking floor. <laughs> As a, I, you know, I gotta make sure I have enough liquor for the rest of the night, right? Fine. How about maybe. So rack, no, maybe no, one soul rack, two straws. Rack, rack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's one soul rack, two straws. I think I can make that work. All right. <laughs> so it'll be cute, and I'm a, and I'm a, and I'm a, and I'm a double eye wink at him. <laughs> he looks at you, and then back over at soul rack. It's bird brains, isn't it? Absolutely, bird brains. All right. Uh, one soul rack, uh, one brandy. And then, you know, I'll bring a I'll bring a, 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 a bowl of water over for the, the pooch too. Yeah, he could use it. Say, uh, Dernan, while I have you here, <clears> and <throat> you know, before I get a little inebriated from this soul rack, uh, do you, by any chance, have you seen any uh, Lords Alliance members in here? Uh, not yet, but um, I believe you know Meyer and Oscar. They they come in here almost every night. They it's about their time. Should be in here just a little bit. Now, uh, would you recognize the symbol on these, on this here keg here? So you, uh, present the, the keg to him, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you show him the, the symbol of the, the uprising dragon that's been burned into it. The, he scratches his chin a little bit and kind of pets his sideburn down. Yeah, that's, a that's a mark of the Zents. Really? Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's some Zentarum goods there. Huh. What, what well, you got inside? Well, uh, it's these vials, hi. Right? But here's the thing, huh? Don't, no, I, touch I, em, I, that's enough. You started vials, I don't want, don't want to know too much. But you literally just asked. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought it was going to maybe be some, some of that, Aged fine, uh, some elvish wines, but uh, vials, it's it, that's got to be no good stuff. What do you mean? What, uh, what are the Zentarum known for? <clears throat> uh, the Zents will do anything they can to, to get as much, achieve as much power as they possibly can. And... Do, do you know anyone that might be interested in this sort of thing? <clears throat> get all sorts of weird folks coming around here. Uh, go ahead, pull it out. Let me see what you got. Actually, come, Solrak, come around here real quick. Yeah, it kind of nods you to come around to the other side of the bar. All right, let me, let me see what you got. Let me see what you're working with. Pull it out, Solrak. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that! Oh, God! <laughs> you said pull it out, Is huh? that a Vienna? <laughs> I thought this was a fine establishment here. What's happening here? Hebrew nationals only. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here it is. Now, don't, be careful. Don't touch it. There's a reason why the bird man looks stinkier than usual when I point to the bird covered in shit. He looks over and ugh, he kind of shudders a bit and puts his shirt over his nose. Uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's definitely... Oh, that's some strange shit you got there. I don't yeah, know. Who, literally. I don't know who would be into that. You might. Uh, you might. Surprise! Need... There's some websites out there. People are into all sorts, all sorts of crazy things. Huh? Talking about <laughs> locations of spiders. Yes, absolutely. How many of these websites spiders are there? Are freaky, yeah. Oh, some might say there's thousands of them. Thousands? Of, are they giant spiders? Yeah. Uh, well, some are bigger than others, yeah. But anyways, enough about this. Alright. Um, <laughs> I'd imagine... I don't know anyone that... I'm sorry, can't help you with finding someone that be interested in this, but to point you in the kind of right direction, I'd imagine someone who is a master of the arcane arts would have an understanding. 
A true master, that is. Who would that be here? Is there anyone in this whole village, in this whole city that would know about this here? I'd imagine you're gonna have to find some lonely wizard in some tower or some crazy shit like that, you know? It's, it's, there's, I don't know about anyone in this town that studies this deep into Arcana, but there's definitely folks out there who are on the brink of, uh, teetering the edge of insanity with how far they push their arcane knowledge, and I'm feeling one of those guys, it might be what help you. All we have to do is find a crazy wizard who's been locked away in some insane tower uh, for all these years. Uh, okay, got it, yes. Totally easy. No I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly that, just some sort of, <laughs> you know, super smart wizard dude. Yeah. But it, get, get back on the people are getting suspicious. You can put it away now. <laughs> Did I zip up my pants? Uh, okay. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> back over here. I'm going to take a big gulp of my sore lash. All right, give me a con. Saving throw. Plus one. Eleven half. All right, so. goop, 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 goop. Goes down smooth as water. Oh, man, this hits the spot, my friend. So, uh, what are these Lord's Lions jerks supposed to be here anyways? They said to be here around this time. Here we are, yeah. Um, just, um, looks around. Yeah, a couple more minutes, I'd imagine. Question is, what would be, what would this Intherum be doing with all of these barrels of these vials right in this town? Did they be trying to poison the people? I don't know, but you should watch yourself, my friend. I'd imagine that's a... It's a, it's a fair warning to heed. Um, yeah, you might be able to relay that word to the Lord's Alliance themselves and pass that... They'll, they'll pass that word along, hopefully. Yeah, I hope you're wrong, though. I hope I'm wrong, too, my friend. We've been around too much destruction. And see too many innocent people die here. Yeah. And you've been along, around, along, uh, around as long as I have. You've seen almost everyone that you love go through your life and die too. So, uh, yeah, if we could stop that, I'm here for it. Amen, my brother. Amen. All right. He gives you a double-eyed wink and turns around, and starts. Uh, Filling up some, some wooden mugs, getting back to his, his work. Oh. Well, boys, what now? I'm gonna take a sip of my uh, soul wreck. <laughs> con con yeah, saving throw. Like... Oh, yeah. And by the way, that's uh, five gold pieces. Fifteen. Fifteen. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Gulp, you take one bigger gulp than Silrak and you slam it back down at the table and look at him. Just kind of shrug your shoulders like, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> huh. to take a bigger gulp than Silrak, are you? And I take another gulp. <laughs> <laughs> Do another con saving throw, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then Silrak died of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> Eleven. Uh, plus one's twelve. Uh, you, you you try to take that one extra gulp like Luke Gonj, but when you take that very last one, it sticks in the back of your throat, and you spit it back up on on the countertop a little. Uh, not the whole mouth full, but you hold some of it back, and you swallow back some of those chunks, but you spit out a decent amount. Dern and say, hey, hey, Solrak, come on, man. Oh, Solrak. I'm, maybe... I'm used to swallowing like the bird creature here, okay? Uh, I, think, I think we need to call this drink the Lugans now. What do you think here, Dernan? <laughs> uh, I'm going to take another gulp. Oh, my God. All right, give me another constitution saving throw. You guys are... Oh, oh 20. Ah. <laughs> going down like water, Solrak. <laughs> He, Luke Gange, just completely tilts it vertically and starts chugging that thing like like it's nothing. And it's just sliding down his gullet. And he puts it, slams it back down on the, the countertop, wipes his beak off. 
lets out a large belch right in your face, and it smells of that gross black ichor and the the liquor and the and the strong dark ale and whatever other bird shit he's been up to, and oh, it's right in your face, and you're just wafting it out like, oh, oh that's it. I'm gonna try to chug the me. rest. Now. What's up? I'm gonna try to chug the rest. I'm gonna try to chug the rest now. <laughs> All right, con saving throw with disadvantage. <laughs> Okay. That's a 19. Not not bad. 19's not bad. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tap him on the shoulder. I'm going to tap him on the oh shoulder my. and give him bardic inspiration. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna, you can do this, buddy. So that's a d6 or d8? A d8. Roll d8. It. So, Rack, you're rolling a d8? Oh, a d8. Sorry. No worries. And then you're gonna add one to that too for Luke's uh, thing. Ten, so eleven. You go to chug it, and you're putting it down. Uh, most of it, though, is spilling out the edge of your lips and down your face, down your chin, your neck, your shirt, just pouring down you. And uh, a couple people around the like sitting at the tables uh, turn their heads and look over your direction because you're like making these like guttural like beast noises as you're doing it like like, taking it down and you slam down the mug as you finish it and immediately hurl it all back up and then look over at Lugan's like see and then you fall backwards off your bar stool and (laughs) you take three points of bludgeoning damage uh for well, the record, that still totally counts. You should be paying us for this entertainment here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Who's the, I gotta clean all this up now. And he's, he starts grabbing a, a mop and bucket and starts pulling it over there. He, you dirty bastards. I drift off and slowly start walking over to this table and go, Do you know who any of Do you do me a do who those people are? Never met them in my life. They look over and. <laughs> Sorry, uh, and you are? Oh, I'm Mr. Chaddington. Don't worry, I'm only in your dreams. <laughs> nice try. Well, okay then. I just sit there and stare at her. <laughs> yeah, you're staring at this woman, uh, short brown hair, uh, and sitting there with another man who's got shorter length brown hair as well pulled back and they looked like they were like in the middle of a, a conversation and just like kind of enjoying like the night off and then you jump in and sit there and uh trying to jump in with the conversation and they're just like staring at each other looking back and forth and then looking at you and then looking back at each other like yeah so uh we Is there were food on the table there's just beverages i i i take the guys and have a sip Okay, uh, <laughs> you you go ahead and uh, go. So, what's your story, my friend? Um, uh, excuse me. Uh, is do you do this often? I uh, meet people out in the lively city of Waterdeep. Of course, I do. Uh, no. Uh, uh, do you have any manners? Well, I, I have plenty of manners. I keep them upstairs in the cupboard. You. That was pretty funny. I'm. I. I, I like that one. That's. It's pretty good. I'll give you that. But. What? What's your deal? What? What do you? I'm just trying to sit down and have good conversations with good people. And here you are denying me that fact. Look, sorry. After I, I've, you know, <sighs> saved Waterdeep from a manticore. But you know who says anything about that? Nope. I'm sorry. I, I get a little nervous around new people. You, you saved a mant. You saved Waterdeep from a manticore. Yes, yes. Me and my friends over there. A manticore showed up in the docks, and we took care of it. So you are friends with them? No, 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 no. The dog's my friend. Oh, make a deception check. Well, uh, so uh, 
Tell me the story of you saving Waterdeep from this. I didn't hear anything of this. There's a Manticore. Yes, yes, yes. You see, there was a there was a ship heading towards Waterdeep with a Manticore on it, and me and my friends we buggered the ship, gravely wounded the Manticore, and then let the gods of Waterdeep finish it. Wow, that's, that's quite the story. Me, me and my dog friend, just the dog. I don't know the other two. Uh, is, is was that he points to your chest? Is that you know the big wound that you have on you? Is that from the Manticore? <sighs> it's from my travels. It's from it's from many a hard day. Part of it from the Manticore. Part of it from fate. I don't even know what that um, means. Yeah, I, you're, you're quite an interesting uh, fellow here. Um, uh, thanks for, for saving us and the city. It's, it is my pleasure. It is my pleasure, and I and I take the girls' drink too, and I just walk back to the bar with both their drinks. She stands up. Hey, where are you going with that? You're welcome. No, 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 no. And she starts walking, you know, so, so you're walking away, and she stands up. You hand that over right now, and she's standing a good two feet taller than you, looking over you. What beverage? She looks down and literally grabs the two mugs out of your, uh, from your hand. Uh, you can try to make a contested strength check if you want. See if, I'll uh, do a strength check. Okay. Uh, saving throw, where's the check? Is it a saving? Oh, it's just the top one, right? Uh, yeah, correct. <laughs> I rolled a 17. Uh, so she, she yanks them out of your hand, and it kind of, with her foot, pushes you backwards. Get lost! And she turns around and looks over her shoulder back at you and spits on the ground and then throws the slams and mugs back at the table. And the gentleman, who does look generally, like, shocked and nervous, like, looks at you and just shakes his head, like, ah, dude, I'd back off. Well, aren't you the little dame? Where do you come from? I was actually looking for a fighter. I'm not a fighter. This week on Wilmore raped someone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a uh, born and raised water deep. Born and raised water deep. So you've been here for quite some time. Could she, I? She's not interested I... in talking to you now. To be quite honest. Quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> there. After you took sips out of the drinks and then stole them from them. And they could tell that you're lying. I cast suggestion on her. Okay. Let me just cast it. Uh, Solrak, while this is going on, you see the front doors of the bar open up, and both Meyer and Oscar are sitting there, uh, off duty. And they uh, are standing there, rather, and they uh, come over and they sit down at the same table that they were positioned at when you guys talked to them the night before. Now, uh, how drunk am I? I'm like, oh, you are <laughs> you are more drunk than you were last night, and oh you are bloodied. Okay. So, when I, when I see them sit down, I, like, swing over and like, Hey! Wasker! My winner, boys! Yeah! And I, like, run over rolling the cask with me, uh, the keg with me, like, hey! and then I put my arms around them, and I'm covered in shit, how you boys doing here, and I just say, like, blood's, like, splattering onto the table and onto them and shit <laughs> from my mouth. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> they look over at you like, jeez, oh, Solrak, oh, you fucking stink, man. Um. What? Always does. Well, we, we, you know, a lot of time has passed since we've had to wait for you guys here. So, so are you, you guys took forever here. Are you fucking hammered? 
No, no, no. I'm fine. And I started like crying. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Asuka. <laughs> I'm Meyer. Oh. Uh. Well, I hate Meyer. But I love you, Oscar. It's the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> they just like shake their head back and forth, kind of like brush you off. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, so you spent some time uh, at Doc Words today, I'm assuming. Uh, especially by the way, yeah. uh, you reek of. Of Quipper. Uh, so, uh, what do you guys think of what do you guys think of these? And then I look over and I, I show the the, the keg. Uh, oh, Solrak, where'd you get that? Ah, uh, you know. Uh, Shh, keep it down, keep it down. Solrak has the, what do you mean? I'm whispering here, ha. You, the Oscar looks back and Wilmer, Luke Gons, come here, help me. And I'm gonna run on over there. Does my um suggestion hit on this person? What was the suggestion? Oh, my suggestion was you could totally go destroy the undermount. You should go down there by yourself. <laughs> um a fourteen wisdom check. Yeah, no that hits. I slide her one gold piece and go, I'll even pay your way. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, no, I think I can take it. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Wilmore. You know what? You just just need that little pep in my step. Hey, Durnin. Let's uh, let's let's get that lever going. Uh, pull up the the plank. Uh, I'm hopping down. He looks over. I like, kind of shrugged. Whoa, 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 whoa! You you're going down to the Undermountain? Ah, Wilmer says I got what it takes. I got what it takes. Uh, <laughs> Won't, won't argue that. So, uh, Durnan comes up, shuffle him from behind the bar over to the, uh, to the pulley system that he's got set up there, the block and tackle, and, uh, her date, this gentleman, no, where, where are you going? No, I, I think it was a joke. He looks over at you, tell, tell her it was a joke. I look at him and I go, what's so special about her? Uh, nothing. She, I, I, we just met a couple weeks ago. I've been. I thought she was the first woman I loved. <laughs> Maybe you should go with her. <laughs> Is that a suggestion? No. <laughs> <laughs> just a comment. <laughs> g g give me a persuasion roll. I got a plus nine on persuasion. That's a seventeen. <laughs> he looks over at you. Yeah, I can't let her go down alone. I may never see her alive. Durnin! I'm going too! And he comes running over to the plank, and he goes running over, and he literally digs into his pocket, like, crazily, and he pulls out a gold piece, and he tosses it at Durnin, and he says, I'm, if you're going down, I'm going down too! And she looks at him, and just Spartan kicks him over the... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> she looks at him, and just gives him a big hug, and says, Let's get those bastards, and they both jump onto the plank, and uh, Dernan lowers it down. Slowly, slowly, they descend through that uh, hundred plus feet tower, and to the depths of the Undermountain, until you hear that, poof, it hits the bottom floor, you hear the footsteps uh, scatter out from below, the, from um, the depths, and he starts cranking that thing back on up, slowly, slowly, about minute and a half later, he makes it all the way up, kind of stretches his arms and cracks his neck, and then hops back behind the bar like like uh, I, nothing ever happened. I stop, as soon as the thing comes back up, I stop my concentration on the spell. And I take both of their drinks, and I walk <laughs> over to Oscar and Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you get another inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> that was too fun. Um, so you, as soon as you lift your concentration from that spell, you hear from the, the tower, Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, That's, You're sick, man. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I just wanted a drink. <laughs> Uh, 
All right. Um, so you make your way over to the table with two drinks in your hand now. Uh, to Oscar and Meyer, uh, Solrax standing there talking to them with the uh, barrel showing it to them, but being extremely loud and belligerent. <laughs> Solrax! What do you mean, you guys? I'm not being loud. I'm just telling you, I found some dealies here, and I just want you to look at them and tell us what these dealies are with all this judgment here. So, Rack, buddy, 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 why, why, why don't you just have a seat with our old friends Wiener and Oscar, and 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 maybe we could sort this whole thing out. You want yeah, another Soul Rack ask... drink? You, you want another big Soul Rack? You want another big one? Okay, I like that. Yeah. Okay, you sit down over there, and I'll go get you another Soul Rack. And I, I run over to the bar, and I go, Hey, buddy, can you just put me water in the same cup that you gave him the Soul Rack? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like my 21st birthday all over again. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, man, it's beer. It's beer. It's totally beer. <laughs> he looks at you, like, exhaling, like, a sigh of relief. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely do that for you. No problem. He kind of pours water in it and just swishes it around in the in like the bucket that he presents to the Soul Rack during sin. And the picks up a lot of the, the dark residue that's still in there and kind of makes like a, a darker water. Um, and he hands it back over to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, darn it. Uh, Bird, Brutus, let's uh let's head over and see if um, what, what these Lord of Alliance know about this uh, fantastic uh, keg. And I'll, 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 I'll bring the water the over. Table, <laughs> when you come back to the table, I'm going to be sitting on the one who I think is Oscar, but it's actually Meyer, on his lap because there's no other chair. <laughs> 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 well, Solrak, I got you another Solrak. You should try to drink this whole thing. It's all you, Whoa! buddy. Oh, <clears throat> for me? Yeah! For you. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chug down the one I think is booze. <laughs> All right, you chug it down, um, and yeah, you you chug, 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 it goes down, and uh, you wipe your lips, and you're like, ah! You hawk out, like you just like think you just like. I'm the man. Exactly. Oh, you, know, you see me drink this shit here? Ooh, Oscar's getting <laughs> right. excited here. <laughs> <clears throat> Luke Gons, when you walk over and see them all, is there anything that you say or do? You're muted if you're talking, Luke. Check two. There, there it is. <laughs> Have you been muted a while? I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, um, no. Yeah, so I'm gonna just walk over and uh, just pat Solrak on the back and say, "There you go, buddy." And uh, but anyway, Oscar Meyer. So what do you, what do you think about this? I, I, so you guys uh, were you able to follow Narvi and the uh. Z Zenterum? Narvi vanished, but we were able to uh, kill just about everyone else that was on the ship. Oh, oh wow. whoa. That's extreme, but I guess you gotta do whatever you gotta do. Um, it, was, it was either us or them. And and dude, I understand. It wasn't gonna be us. <clears throat> Completely understand. Uh, you gotta, gotta hold your ground. But, uh, you know, that's that symbol right there, that's a that's a Zentarum symbol, uh, clear as day. So, yeah, I'm sure you, how many of these were there? There were five, all in the, all in small little barrels. All right, thank you, thank you. You, um, might have just thwarted something, something mischievous that the, the Zents are up to. Is the, um, are these other barrels still around? Yeah, they're still on the ship. Still at the ship, okay. Um, cool. We'll uh, we'll handle it from here. Uh, thank you, uh, you guys. That's amazing. Was there any other uh, updates or news? Um, you guys were following them, trying to find out anything. Was there anything else that you're able to uncover or anything at all? Well, they 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 had this magical dohecka. Pedron or something 
that they found and 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 that's what that's what they were actually trying to smuggle out of your city hmm. i don't know what it was it, i mean you talking it, about the thing that sildar gave you yeah 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 they they found it they stole it huh and what they was... ended up taking it from us in the fight and what was this thing what what did what you said it was I a don't... shield right yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was, but they took it. Interesting. And, it, and then, and then on the ship, they also had a separate thing that was like a, like a circle, flat, with ten sides, and a hedron shape. And I, I don't know. They they took that, and that's that's what he grabbed when he disappeared. It was weird. He actually wasn't worried about the about the shield. He they, they threw the shield in the water, but then he took this this other thing with him. Weird. Mm. It's weird. It's... I was wondering it, it, what do you guys have like a like a leader around here that maybe you could help introduce us to? Potentially. Because um... I would I would love to get to the bottom of just what's in this keg. And what they were doing here. Yeah, yeah, let's, um... You guys want to come with us? Let's, we can go to our mess hall. In our armory. And, uh... Maybe we can talk to some other... Some other members there. Get to the bottom of everything. That would be fantastic. Do, do you want to help us with a wheelbarrow to put Soul Rack in? I thought he would just probably... Fall asleep or something. You know? Leave, leave him behind or... I, we can come. That's fine. I... I don't feel like pushing them around. You guys can deal with that if you want to. <laughs> I don't take kind of being tucked out to another. Shh, 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 shh. Good boy. Good boy. Uh, well, maybe you can, uh, maybe you can take quick little nappers. And, uh, maybe the bird and I head over to the best hall? Yeah. Or, or do you think maybe we could all sleep this off and head over tomorrow morning? Uh, I I don't know. I think we do this sooner rather than later. It's still only evening. Mm -hmm. I th I think we uh put Solrak to bed real quick, and we uh head on over to the mess hall. Go tuck him in. Yeah. I like it. Bruce could come with us too. Yeah. Cool. So uh, you guys want to uh close up your tabs and uh get rolling then? Yeah. All nope. right. All right. I'm assuming you guys go up to the bar. You pay your tabs. There's uh, five mm -hmm. gold, five gold pieces. I already paid the five gold. Pieces. All right. Cool. All right. That's beautiful. Uh, All right. Then you are fine. You guys uh, head on out. Oscar and Meyer lead you through the streets of the castle ward. <laughs> uh, not too far of a walk. It takes you guys about ten minutes. You guys are winding through different streets, and you make it to a tall mortared stone building, um, which they take you inside of. And it is the uh, Ward's Alliance mess hall. Let me add them oh, back in there. We, we've obviously got the barrel with us, right? Yeah. Yes, you got the barrel. Let's see. That's Meyer and Oscar with you in the front. Uh, Wilmer and Luke Gange. All right, cool. Let me fix this on the stream screen. We good. All right. So, like I said, there's uh, it's tall mortared stone walls uh, in this building that lead up to some vaulted ceilings. And on the east-facing walls, uh, you have these beautiful stained glass windows featuring imagery of both the sun and the moon rising and setting over the Sea of Swords. <clears throat> um, somewhat of a... you guys would take it as a symbol of the Alpha and Omega and how the Lord's Alliance will protect from the beginning until the end. Um, you see all sorts of uh, weaponry... Uh, on racks lined up, uh, suits of armors, uh, weapons and other armor, and assorted um, guard goods being repaired and worked on. You see four wooden dining tables with uh, sturdy wooden benches up on the north side, um, as well as a bunch of number of beds where you'd imagine that these Lords Alliance members uh, come in, get some rest and some sleep. Um, and sitting at the table, you guys see enjoying a meal and some drinks are three cloaks which are the first rank level of uh, Lords Alliance members, and a Stingblade, who is like a 
first rank, I mean, like, lo- lo- lowest rank. So, um, mm-hmm. Stingblade, the guy on the top left there, um, he's, uh, like, a third rank from the top, essentially, uh, which is, like, three higher than the Cloaks. Um, he's, like, a reliable faction agent. He's entrusted mm-hmm. with a lot of secrets and helping out lead these people. Um, but, yeah, so you guys walk in and see them all sitting there, and Meyer and Oscar, uh, and sh- like, point out everything to you guys, kind of give you an introduction of, like, what everything is and everything, and then walk you guys up to the tables and give an introduction to you guys. Say, all right, this is, uh, guys, I'm going to give you a welcome to, uh, this is Wilmore Chattington, he's, uh, and Luke Gonch. They've been helping us out, uh, spot on the Zents a little bit and figure out what exactly they've been up to since, uh, this Red Wizard has come in to play with them, and they keep on getting out of our sight a little bit, and s- sneaking away, and uh, we, c- we can't seem to keep up, but Luke Gange and Wilmore here, they were able to um, get some intel, it's a, hey, guys, c- come on up here, tell, tell them what you had, tell, show them what you found. Well, good evening, gentlemen, we've actually, um, so on the ship down at the uh, dock ward, we, uh, we came across five uh, tiny barrels, and on the barrel depicted uh, the Xanterum mark, and then inside held this little black oily vial. The uh, one agent, the Stingblade, stands up. Um, pretty tall gentleman. Definitely uh, a little bit older than most of the other guys. Uh, he's got a, a long sword to his side and uh, kind of a rough beard shaggy hair stands up and says uh, thank you gentlemen for helping us out here you said there are five of these yes sir we've all, we were only able to uh, grab one of them uh, so there's four left on the ship sir uh, okay the ship is anchored um, it's still down in the dock ward I'm assuming mm-hmm. excellent. as far as we know excellent and you uh <clears throat> You, you saw Narvi with with this ship. Yes, but uh, un- unfortunately Narvi had vanished with the uh, the dodecahedron. Hmm. Dodecahedron. What is this? Uh, this dodecahedron you speak of? Well, it, it grants you magic. Interesting. I wonder what the. Zents, they're always looking for an upper hand, a way to uh, be able to get the power on everyone else, and using uh, magic, that's not above them. I'm sure that they're up to something mischievous. Say, what what exactly are in these barrels? I'm going to like walk the barrel over towards him, and I'm going to push the top of the barrel to unlatch it. And just show him. All right, you, you go. I, welcome. I up. wouldn't touch that, my friend. Yeah, now be careful with this. <clears throat> um, why do you say that? Well, let's just say I held it, and you see all this black all over my body. Yeah, I was puking that out of myself um, while I was holding it. Wasn't gonna say anything about that, but it's good to know that that's where it came from. So. He uh, he inspects it a little bit and kind of checking it out, not touching it, but lifting up the barrel and kind of holding it to inspect it as much as he can. I've I, I I've never seen anything like this. Um, the the Zents they they're working with something that we're not used to, that we've never experienced them working with before. This what is, do you uh, think? What do you think they could be using this for, potentially? I'm trying to imagine what it possibly could be, and I don't know the exact purpose of it, but I can imagine that the end goal is just total domination. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Whatever. For whatever reason they have these vials, I can't imagine it being for any good reason. 
say that the ship is still down at the dock ward and that where the barrels are, uh, where can I find them on this ship? I'm gonna send some men immediately. Right below the main deck, and there's four smaller barrels that are <clears throat> in like the the middle area, tucked in a corner. Um, and like I said, they're smaller compared to the other crates and other barrels. <laughs> Noted. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Luganj. I um, I appreciate this kindly. We've been watching the Red Wizards and the Zents kind of pull together their forces for some time, and now that Narvi, this seems to be uh, the leading agent for the Red Wizards here in Waterdeep to connect with the Zents. It seems like since he's been here, their moves have been speeding up. Something is on the rise, and I think what you guys were able to just do right now potentially thwarted anything that they were trying to do, so I, uh, can't thank you enough for your efforts and for, for putting your life on the line. I see, obviously, you're you're cut up pretty bad right now, and all this that black grossness around you. Uh, I could see that it wasn't an easy task for you, and I I appreciate you guys helping us out with this. Yeah, not an easy task at all, but <laughs> you know it's not a problem. <clears throat> um, it, here the. Not much I can uh I can offer right now, but I can uh yeah you, know, you guys did some work. Work deserves pay. Uh, here's here's two hundred gold pieces for you. No, we appreciate. It. And can, I, can yeah. I ask you something real quick before we go, my friend? Yeah, abs but, absolutely. Where have you stationed at Daggerford? None of us were in Daggerford. We've, most of us have been here in Waterdeep for a little while, but uh, Daggerford has gone through some changes recently, and we're actually not there anymore. Yeah, yeah, I know you guys were recently kicked out of there, and I was just trying to see if there was anyone in Waterdeep that had um, been there recently. Um, you know what? I don't think any of the members from Daggerford made their way up here. The, uh probably spread their ways out a bit further south. I knew Baldur's Gate needed a little bit of help with uh, some of the the docks around there as well, keeping eyes on and the trade that they have going on. It's a, it's, it's a little bit rougher around there. It's Imagine the dock ward, but it's a, a decent amount of the city is that, is that kind of roughness. Uh, I think some of them probably went down there to keep guard and keep watch as much as possible. Fair enough. And, and, and do you do you know of the Zantere having some kind of large metal circle decahedron kind of thing? Have you have have you seen that uh, when 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 the Red Wizard left, he he took a onyx box filled with a, a magical artifact. The Red Wizard took it. Yeah. Well, that's terrifying. I cannot imagine what that could possibly control. You make it sound like it's definitely something he was trying to protect at all cost. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry to. No, I don't. I don't know what exactly that is, but I'd imagine if he did not stick around for that battle. And uh, took that and went running. That's a. Uh, it must be a major key in this. In this here. You don't know if they have any places that they congregate, or they just kind of spread out everywhere. Yeah, they're like fucking rats, man. Ah. Okay, I guess we'll just have to keep an eye out and the ear out. Absolutely, and uh, you guys. Uh, you guys are always welcome uh, with the Words Alliance. Uh, definitely, we appreciate you helping us out. And uh, again, couldn't have done this without you. So thank you so much. And I'm sorry that it was such a an ordeal. It's a pleasure. All right, you guys bouncing? 
Anything else that you want to yep. do? <clears throat> I'm guessing back to the bar? Yeah, back to the bar. Maybe get some rest. All right, Meyer. Um, yeah, go on. You head back to the bar. I'm, I'm going to do a quick trip. I'm going to go see Astrid <laughs> at the North Wing. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, okay. Um, we're gone. You're gone. When we're gone. All right, so you're going to go see Astrid? Let's yeah. see. Uh, is this the right one? I'm I'm just gonna because it's, well, it's a play, right? Well, yeah, actually, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go to Soul Rack real quick, actually. Yeah. Uh, Soul Rack. What are you doing, man? <laughs> You're we're back at the yawning portal with you. Uh, Luke Gange and Wilmore left. Uh, I'd say probably you know. They could have just left, and this is what's happening now while they were at the, uh, the, uh, Lord's Alliance place. And, yeah, what are you and, doing? Uh, did they just leave me in the same spot? Yeah. Okay, so, uh... We're really good friends. Yeah, great. <laughs> so I wake up, and I look over, and all I see is Brutus, because I see they left them behind as well. I said I was taking Brutus. Uh, my bad. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Boop. Yeah. <laughs> One. Right, so then I... Is the loneliest so number. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I walk over to Durnham. Just say, uh, where everybody go? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, you're, uh... They all, they head out the door with those Lords Alliance fellas. A couple minutes ago, not too long ago. You mean they left me and they went without the weeders and then they just left me behind here? I, I, they figured uh, you had you you had you could handle yourself here. I uh, handle look. myself, huh? That's not what I like to hear. Uh, all right. Well, uh, I guess. Uh, how about you to uh, let me get a room for the night, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that uh, the room is still a bit of a mess, the one that you had last night, so I'll let you just take that one again. Cool. We, we never got around to uh, getting all that slop that you left all around the place, but... Slop. <laughs> uh, no other way to describe right. it. Good enough for me. All right. I'll see you in the morning, Dirty. I just, uh, this is five silvers. For the room. Take, uh, I'll take a, sh I'll take a rest. Cool. All right, you're going to bed. Yeah. You take, you taking a short rest or a long rest? I'm, I'm taking it. You're going to sleep. I'll do a long. Yeah, I'll go along. All right. Silrak so makes his way upstairs. Uh, kind of tripping up the stairs on his way up, bumping his shoulders into the wall. Uh, he almost falls over the railing when he gets to the top, but he catches his balance. Whoa! <laughs> and, like, everyone from downstairs looks out at his, like, flailing arms over the edge and hears him, like, make that noise. And then he pops back up and he looks over the edge and gives them all two thumbs up and a shit eating grin. And then, uh, like, I, I got under control, guys. And he makes his way to his room and falls face first into his bed. <laughs> Passed out, snoring. <laughs> Um, Lugans, you're making your way back to the to the yawning portal as well with Brutus. Yep. Okay. Um. Yep. You walk your way through the streets. Uh, not too far of a walk until you get to eventually the good old yawning portal. Um, you see that Solrak is nowhere in sight down here. Um, must have made his way up to bed. Or maybe he left. You don't know. But he's not here anymore. But you can do whatever you want. You want to rack? Well, I'm going to uh, approach Darnan at the bar. All right, all right. Go up and, and approach Darnan at the bar. Yep. And I say, I see Solrak made it to bed. Uh, yeah. Uh, he wanted himself another drink, but I told him just, just said, hey, man. Impressive. Yeah, I think that's time for me, too. Yeah, I you, think I'm gonna get a room. Go ahead, yeah, yeah. Same room's fine with me. Just uh, five silver pieces for you too. Just for the I'll night. I'll give you one one gold piece for having to clean up uh, 
Solrax mess. You know what? I don't know why they give you so much shit. You're not too bad. I, I try. It was nice. There used to be two of us. You know, oh. I think about him sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry. What what happened? Uh, he just turned into an alcoholic. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah. Uh, well, if you see him again, send him over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a bad joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's funny. It's funny. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna catch uh, some of my beauty bird rest here. So. All right. You head on up the stairs. And you're going to sleep. Yeah. All right. All right. Boom. You make your way upstairs. You are a little drunk, not nearly as drunk as Solrak. You make your way up to bed. Um, take off your uh, the light bringer from your side. Put it down. Uh, your coin purse and everything. You lay everything out on the table. Got it all nice and organized. Uh, keep your pendant though close to your side at all times. Anytime you feel like you want to take it off and put it down, something tells you like, no, stay. Like. You don't want it to get any further away from you than it possibly ever could be. And so, you keep it on you, and you hop into bed and get yourself uh, a nice nice little rest. And we will send it over to here with Wilmore. Wilmore, Wilmore, Wilmore. He walks through the streets at night, lonely, in the dark streets of... The northern part of the castle ward, he eventually makes his way out of the castle ward into the north ward district. Here, it's, uh, you'd imagine you, you were told to come up here for a show. You'd imagine that there'd be a little bit more uh, liveliness happening in here, but it doesn't seem like much is happening at all. Um, you start wandering through the, the alleyway and the streets. Um, most of the shops are dark at this point, uh, lights are turned off, um, but you, you keep making your way up, you, she told you where the Troll Skull Manor was, um, and, you know, by golly, you're gonna make it there, and you're gonna see this goddamn show, um, so you know that it's right about in, in this north part of the streets up here, uh, you keep wandering around a little bit, and you finally come across, um, a bar that from the outside looks a little bit unwelcoming. The uh, windows are hard to see through from the thick amount of dust that covers them. Uh, you do hear a little bit of uh, chattering inside and clamoring. And um, yeah, do you want to go on inside? Poke my head in. All right. You poke your head inside of the manor. Let's see. Do I have a... one second? I can't remember if I uploaded this onto here. All right. Yep. You see inside. Um, it's a pretty rough looking place. Uh, cobwebs lining the walls. There are, there are people in here. I just I forgot to put them in there. Apparently, mm -hmm. um, there's a small amount of crowd of people in here. Uh, bartender sitting behind the bar is polishing a glass. Doesn't even look up at you as you walk into the door or as you open the door. Uh, as you haven't made your way all the way in here yet, and yeah, it's a it's quite amount a shady amount of looking characters in here, and you don't hear any sort of performance. I'm gonna just walk around looking to see if anyone's wearing a Harper pin or anything like that. All right. Uh, yeah, you walk into the bar, uh, trying to check out to see if what the scene is and what's going on here. Uh, go ahead and give me an investigation, or perception rather. I'm sorry, investigation is not that. Nice. Uh, looking around, and no, the more you look, the less you want to. Uh, you don't see a Harper pin. Uh, what you see around is a couple of very shady looking characters that, and now that you have walked in and then you're kind of eyeing up the place, you look back around, because uh, you're looking down at like, people's shirts and like what they're wearing and everything, you look up at their eyes and everyone's eyes are piercing on you. Hmm. I just 
slowly meander back to, or I, I, I walk up to the bar and order a drink. Okay. Uh, yeah, you walk up to the bar, you order a drink. Let's throw a man out here. Uh, the man who's sitting behind the bar, who's uh, polishing the glass, doesn't even look up at you when you walk in. Uh, you go up to the bar and still not acknowledging you at all. I uh, look down at my... Um, I look down at my uh, compass. Tech magic. Yeah, the tech magic. <clears throat> Uh, so you go and uh, you pull out your compass, and the needle on it, it starts, uh, it's on the left side of it, uh, which means like no magic, and you start bouncing up just a little bit, like on the one or two, uh, but nothing crazy, doesn't seem to like be pinging off anywhere. You look at the guy, like, curiously, and you start, like, slightly, like, sneakily sliding the, the compass around, look around for any sort of uh, magic in any sort of direction, see if the needle decides to spring up at anything in. No, it just seems like a very dull lingering uh, is there, aura. Is there a stage or anything in here? Uh, from where you're sitting, you can't see a stage. It looks like there's a, a area where maybe performances take place, but not a, an actual, like, lifted stage. Hmm. I'll, um... A so, uh, couple of whispers around you are starting to pick up and you notice them. I will head over. Is there like a seat by the door? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. You can take that seat. It's right here. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to pull out a health potion and drink it. Just, just kind of sip it like it's a cocktail. Yeah, you, uh, you're sipping down the potion. Uh, the bartender didn't want to help you at all, so you're like, fine, I got my own drinks. Uh, you're looking around, and you see, like, on the walls, they're, like, loaded with pictures. Um, but the dust and, like, the cobwebs stop you from, like, wanting to take a closer look and seeing what they even are. Um, can't even make through the, through the thick layer of dust what they are. And, I mean, this this tavern is almost completely abandoned beside the few people that you rough looking people who are looking at you and it's eerily silent and honestly you're unsure if all of them are even alive all these people uh and they're making you a little bit nervous hmm gonna Let's see one more thing I'm just gonna kinda Mosey on back out the door. All right. All right. As you're uh, moseying out the door, you open up the door, and you feel a cold wind brush up against you. And uh, you will turn around, and you see the spectral image of a female who looks like... Give me a perception roll. Eleven. It looks like Astrid. And she says, she's floating there and looks at you with her dull white eyes. Are you leaving before the disappearing act? Absolutely not. That's what I came here to see. Why don't you go get set up? And I'll sit by the door. Oh, no. See, you misunderstand. You will be part of the show. She reaches out her hand to you. Please come along. <laughs> Absolutely. Lead the bitch. way. Lead the way, my friend. <laughs> All right. And I, um, I put my invisibility ring on. Okay. You reach out to her hand, and all you do, you slip with the other hand your invisibility ring on your ring finger, and you disappear. Yes. Okay, and then what happens? I... How close is everybody else to me? Um, There are people sitting at like the bar right here. Um, that ping for you? Yeah. Yeah, right there. There's some people sitting here, and there's a couple people here. Mm. And everyone's still looking at me? It seems like they're like 
yeah, like, like definitely staring at, giving you the eye. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna walk out the door. Astrid uh, reaches back out and says, "Goodbye. Come back anytime you'd like." And she just. You can see her disappear, just like her, her spectral image just shimmers and fades away. Well, that was neat. <laughs> Maybe come back with my friends and when I'm not about to die. <laughs> all, right. all right. And I'm just going to invisible walk all the way back. To the yawning portal? Yeah. All right, you make your way uh, out of the north ward. Uh, to the northern part of the castle ward and uh, back through the castle ward district, uh, you make your way through that like marketplace area where you saw uh, the market set up. It's all broken down tonight for the evening. Uh, you see that statue of the beholder though, uh, and uh, it had the nameplate uh, Xanathar on it, and you kind of observe it a little bit and maybe keep on walking and eventually make your way to the yawning portal. Unless there's anything else that you wanted to know. Mm, yeah, I got one more charge in my detect magic. I'm gonna do that around the the um the beholder. beholder statue and all that stuff. Cool. Uh, yeah, you uh cast detect magic on it, and yeah, you you do pick up a little bit of a magic aura around it. Okay. So and it says Xanathar. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll type it in. Okay. I go, hmm, I'll just note that, and then I'll head back to go take a nice long rest. Cool. You uh, you eventually make your way back to the familiar uh, resting place, uh, watering hole of the Yawning Portal. Dernan uh, gives you a nice j nod and gestures upstairs, um, suggesting that's where you can find the rest of your party. All right, I head right on up. All right, find you, got, a bed. you guys head on upstairs, find a bed, uh, you uh, take your loot off, set it beside your bed, uh, still missing a string from it, but, you know, maybe, do you want to practice any of it, maybe? Uh, yeah, 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 because it's, um, however many I can, however much long, however long I can practice, sure, I'll give that's you, what I'll do. I'll give you uh, two hours in there. Two hours, so that's eleven. So you start trying to figure out the scales uh, without that string on there and how to make certain notes sound like you still have that string and you know just practicing that a little bit going up and down the neck end and you get two more hours of practice on your lute and you're, oh, you let a big yawn stretch out and you're like all right time to kick off the boots hit the hay and call it a night. So um that's exactly what you do and uh, you gentlemen get a uh, nice sleep. Throughout the night, Luke Ganj, uh, new night terror seemed to impact you tonight. Uh, Wilmore, though, however, you start having uh, visions of, of the Bowler and um, just remembering the time at the temple when you took up the pact with him and what it meant and uh, how you saved your party from him and now you're bound to this pack, to this patron, and you have to uphold it, and you've been some wild shit that's happened in the long last uh, few weeks, and you're like, what have I gotten myself into? But you're starting to remember this, this uh, memory from being locked up and being tortured, and uh, that fuels the rage inside the battle, or you feel that, that lightning energy strike through your body, and that, that flames erupt inside of you, and uh, yeah, there's like a you're ready to figure out what that is, what, what that memory is, what has happened, and um, get your vengeance. vengeance. And uninterrupted night's sleep. Yeah. You guys wake up in the morning feeling nice and rested, uh, recovered, rejuvenated, and um, that's where we're going to call it a night. I like it. Yeah. Good shit, Getting guys. Done. Yeah, that was good. Good shit. Cool. I love it. Man. That was crazy. Yeah, I mean, honestly. Oh, but now here comes the sad part that we have two weeks off. Right? Oh, that's right. 
Well, I'm glad I overprepared so I don't have to prepare for that then. There you go. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, no, uh, no, tonight was awesome. You guys did great. That was a lot of fun. Um, super stoked to see where you guys are going with all this. Uh, what this this random uh, liquid that the Zentarums have and uh, what they could possibly have planned with it or what they did have planned with it or anything that's going on with it at all. Who knows? You guys are going to try to figure that out eventually. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. Whatever you guys want to do. That's about it. We'll call it a night and uh, we'll pick up in two weeks whenever we come back to all this and we'll see. I guess you guys will eventually be making out of water deep, huh? One day. Yeah. One day. One day. Did did those people I sent down the well ever come back up? Um, so far not yet. Let me uh okay. let me see something. <laughs> Let's see. Not not yet. Okay. No no sign of anything yet, but uh yeah, yeah. That that was that was a hilarious moment. <laughs> we more definitely got two people killed for free drinks, you guys. <laughs> they could have they they came right back up. They just had to ring the bell or whatever it is down there. <laughs> it was more the disrespect. It was incredible. Um, <laughs> Alright, good stuff, guys. Uh, go ahead, take a nice short rest, and watch out for those goblins under the stairs. <laughs> we'll be back in two weeks here! Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Alright, peace out, y'all.